that's what it does, is that they're holding it for that weapon. Hello, everyone, and welcome it's back to Winds moment. of Arania, our ongoing D and D campaign here on Bold Wolf Gaming. Your PC, by your uh, as you can like see by the tree behind me, we are filming on Christmas. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. No one corrected me. Oh well, um, <laughs> it's not Christmas yet. You were supposed to say it's December tenth, and if you get it's that December reference, December tenth. If you get that reference, you can be my friend. All right. <clears throat> How about your friend? <laughs> we failed you. How about your friend, guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, when we last left off, the regulators had returned to Palha City um, for an emergency meeting of what we have been calling the Secret Secession Council. Um, discovered that the Quorum of Creomond was being moved up due to the situation on the border where the city of Hain used to be. Um, the Jarl, or King now rather, realized that the conflict between uh, the new Palhas army and the forces of Teresia would be brought up at the meeting as well, and the secret about their secession would be officially out. Um, so plans were made to infiltrate the Quorum of Acreomond. Um, and after they went over the initial details of that, um, Fero Isolink, the Archfey, uh, who was believed to be responsible for creating the Crown of Stone, um, confronted the Regulators, uh, sent them to fight against mirror versions of themselves as a way of testing them, and once they were defeated, introduced himself and agreed to make a deal with King Vosser um, to use the crown under the condition that after Orcus is defeated, he gives up the crown. Malcolm was able to work out the catch while Fiero was there, and Fiero admitted that the catch is when the king is done with use of the crown, he has to step down from his throne. Uh, believing that it's more important to save the continent from Orcus uh, than it is to continue being a king, he agreed that he would step down when the crisis was over and uh, would look into turning Palhas into a republic. Firo was impressed by his humility, the deal was struck, and the king is now in charge of the army of stone. Uh, Mira had a discussion with Ethid about their relationship, and uh, considering ethical non-monogamy, since she is now developing feelings for Echo as well, uh, meanwhile, avoiding the awkward conversation, Echo can return to the library um, to see if any information was gathered on this figure from her visions. Uh, it turned out to be a trap. She was surrounded by members of none other than the Cormanthor Gassay, uh, which is the organization that Zuko was formerly, formerly a member of. Um, after a series of questions, the leader of Zuko's adopted father um, decided that Echo most likely is the reincarnation of the Shadow, uh, Queen of Shadows, uh, but she is not a threat at this time, and gave her some advice on how to continue forward while uh, maintaining herself as the person she is now. Um, so, uh, at the end of the day, you all went back to the tavern, let me get back here on the stream safe list. Right. <clears throat> so we all return to the tavern. Is there any special business before the end of that night? All right, then you all uh, retire for the night. Echo. I was gonna say Echo's oh, gonna boy. A dream. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you spent the rest of the evening processing your encounter <laughs> with the Cormanth Orgase. Um, both the fact that you allowed yourself to be lured into a trap. Um, and the things that were said since Mirren essentially 
all but confirmed that you are in fact the Queen of Shadows, this figure that you've seen attacking you in your vision. As you try to put that all out of your mind <clears throat> and take your meditation for the evening, you do slowly feel yourself slipping into that dark space where these visions occasionally occur. This time, you see again this Queen of Shadows, but seemingly younger. Cup size? <laughs> Whatever the are, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you see the younger version of the Queen of Shadows, happier, brighter. Um, you see these very quick flashes that you're not able to fully process what you're seeing, but you do feel the emotions in each of these scenes. And as they progress, it, it's, they seem to go forward through time as the queen rose to her position of power. You witness the emotions of being a a benevolent leader and the love of the people that were uh, living under her power. You feel the emotions of this vague betrayal that was mentioned by Mirren. This series of events that started leading her down a dark path. The anger and the, the righteousness that she felt as she began taking the souls of other fey creatures and increasing her power and expanding her reach in the fey realm. just keep flashing past you You'll, again you're not really able to process specifics about the events but you feel the emotions as they progress forward and as her heart got darker and colder and when it finally seems to slow down to a point where you're actually able to focus on what's going on you are standing behind her at the edge of a precipice watching an army uh, march across the strangely dark Feyrealm, looking very similar to how it was when the city of uh, Thanatos appeared in your realm shortly before your village was destroyed. And you can feel the defiance coming from her as this army approaches, daring to challenge her power. You catch yourself holding your breath involuntarily. Perfect. Mommy? That timing was perfect. <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't showing that. Um, but you do realize at this point that you are physically standing behind her. And you hope for a very long moment that this is just... You're just simply witnessing events in your former life. But almost as if she's able to hear the thought, you find that she suddenly turns... Wow, that title is perfect! <laughs> and faces you with those... dark, empty eyes. More realistic than anything that you've seen in previous visions. Flesh and blood... The Queen of Shadows is looking at you. And your quick reflexes, you sense her preparing to reach out for you. What do you do? Dodge. Dodge? For her. I'm eating it, I'm eating it, I'm eating it. Oh, what was oh, that? that? What the hell oh, is that? Oh, buddy. What? 
I was trying to bring up the stream so I could watch it, so because I could, my back oh, okay, is turned. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I wish I had another monitor. To... <laughs> uh, it won't let you deafen the stream. I was trying. Um, all right, so What's you dodge out of the grasp. Work? What do you do next? Um... Trying to think, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Ask her what she wants. I don't know. In what way? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> From me. Tell me what you want. It's not that simple. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> um, she only, in response, she only gives you a sinister grin as she continues closing the space between you. She is trying to grab a hold of you like she did in one of the first visions. Slap her. Don't slap her. I don't want to piss her off, but I don't want to be grabbed by her. I just keep moving away from her. I don't want to be grabbed by her. Okay, so you're are you just backing up or are you gonna turn tail and run? I feel like if she runs, it's just gonna get worse. Like Jason. Yeah, I'm just yeah, gonna keep right. backing yeah, away from her because I think in the first, first thing, I think I, think I did I run did from run her, from and she her. somehow she still managed, still managed to, get to get me. Right. I think you should stand. I'm not your gonna take my eyes off her. her. Yeah. Okay, so you just <laughs> simply keep backing up. Cliff. Oh no. <laughs> uh, staying just to, just out of her arm's reach. After a few moments, you feel warmth <clears throat> on your back, on, on the back of your neck, on the back of your head, almost as if I can't, I direct can't sunlight. I'm sorry, what's that? The that? music's too loud, she can't hear you. Oh, I couldn't, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hear the music. music. It just it sounded, just sounded like, there like there was nothing coming from the mic, mic at all. I think I accidentally got there. <laughs> uh, no, actually, my... Uh... Can you hear? Hello. Hello. What your voice meter isn't uh, picking up. Ryan thinks he muted her. No, I deafened her. I deafened her on accident. I'm deafened her. So test, test, test. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear him? Yeah, I can okay. hear him. I can hear him. Okay. okay, awesome. And I can hear and you. I can hear you. Yep. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> um. All right, so uh, after a few moments, you notice the feeling of warmth on the back of your entire body as if you're being hit by direct sunlight. And it was dark? It was dark. Yes, it is uh, unnaturally dark. Um, the only light sources is the torches of the army that is approaching... Um, and the reflections of that light off of the the trees and such around you that's kind of giving you a bit of visibility there but you feel like you're getting hit on the back by direct sunlight i look behind, I look behind me behind because, because i, I if, it's if it's dark, dark then it's then confusing that i feel like i'm getting, like I'm getting hit by direct, hit sunlight. By direct sunlight all right i'm gonna regret I'm gonna this, regret this. <laughs> Um, as you you continue, you know, backstepping to keep out of her reach, um, and you look for the source of this warmth, and in the pitch black sky, you see a distant orange star. Oh, 
though it is a small pinpoint in in the distance it is impossibly bright and you feel that it is the source of the warmth and even though you know it to be a distant star you get the feeling as if you could reach out and touch it the impossible planet Right somewhere else with that one. What do you do? I want to try and reach out and touch it. it. Already doing better than your predecessor. Um, <laughs> all right, so sure enough, instinctively you reach out to see if the sensation you get as delusion or if it's something you're actually capable of and sure enough you are able to pluck the star out of the firmament and as you pull it out of the sky it gets brighter and in your hand is a diamond shaped amber crystal that shines we know what that an impossible means. amount of light in every direction, almost hurting your eyes, but you can feel the warmth Champion. and the power in your hand. Chaos. What do you do? She has gone hobo killing for free. Eat it. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Does it seem Does to it affect seem to the, affect queen, the in queen in any way? She is. It, you are. It is currently. You turned around to reach out and grab it. Um, you are between uh, it and the queen. I guess I turn I guess back I turn around to see if it affects, see if it affects, the, affects queen. the queen. All right. So as you turn around, that brilliant light immediately hits her and she recoils and instead of reaching for you she begins to try to get away from the crystal what do you do i keep keep just trying to follow her with it do you chase her <laughs> okay, so as you turn around and you realize that she is being affected by this energy, you feel that same warmth just come fill your entire body and all of your fear and confusion and, and lack of certainty seems to be siphoning away from you, and you intentionally push the crystal out in her direction. And you hear another voice in your head. Speaking to you much the same way that the Shadow Queen has been, but it's different. It's While it is stern and serious, it's also somehow comforting. A fem- very powerful female voice uh, comes into your head and says, I will help you control your darkness and turn the chaos into a weapon. And as you reach out with the crystal towards the queen, she tries to pull away from it, but you can see her essence is being pulled into the crystal, or in the direction of the crystal. And as it reaches your arm, it begins to spiral around your forearm and then up your shoulder and begins to envelop your body, but not in the same way that she encased you in one of your first visions of her, but more in the sense of a form of armor or a weapon and gradually the queen becomes unrecognizable as her entire essence um, is pulled towards the crystal and surrounds you and then there is a bright burst of light from the amber crystal that washes over the land until you are unable to make anything out through the brightness and you find yourself awakening from your meditation.
All right. So uh, I'm not sure if you started your meditation at the beginning of the night or the end of the night, but uh, Sonic just collected a chaos symbol. That's what the chaos. <laughs> Probably at the beginning of the night. All right. So uh, you awaken from your meditation. The tavern is largely silent. There's still fire going down um, in the main area, but there is no one really there except for the you know, overnight uh, barkeep. Uh, everyone else is asleep. She's gonna get wasted while we all sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Is there anything specific you do with with the remainder of your time alone? Uh, read. Because I know I've got a bunch of new books, so I'm going to read. Okay. Um, so we awake the following morning. Um, nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call her nerd for me. <laughs> um, Alright, is um, the... Quorum is on the 57th. It is currently the 52nd. Um, of course, there will be several more meetings um, to hash out the fine details. <clears throat> um, but we will skip over most of the week unless there's anything specific. I know I want to find my sleepy time arrows. Okay, so you want to find them here? Um, Alright, so. We get the ingredients and try to brew it ourselves, though, too. Yeah, you might kill him. That'd be okay. Yeah. Remember, uh, yeah, we had this discussion. It is possible, but you would need to find the recipe, and you aren't very like this is a oh, new okay. potion for you. Right, so it'd be safer to go to someone with experience and pay them to keep the mouth shut. More intimidating. Well, actually, though, actually, since you're doing it in class, uh, even if they were part of it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're you're politically connected here, so. If anybody's like, hey, this guy's trying to, like, put people to sleep, um... This guy's trying to roofie a bunch of elven chicks. (laughs) 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 They're going to, uh... They're gonna, you know, like, they they report you it's all gonna fall on deaf ears, because, you know, the Jarl, or king, I keep forgetting he's a king now. Um... Uh, we'll know what you're up to. So here, actually, you're fine. So you want to go get, um, what weapons are you guys planning on using in this process? Can't use my sword. Can't use the crossbow. Crossbow bolts can be poison. Yeah, they're yeah. quiet. Okay. You would need to get skills with a bow if you wanted to be quiet. Oh, that's right, yeah. Or to. build some type of suppressor. Or a gas grenade. Or, 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 a, or a dart gun. That'd that could cool. work. That could work. <laughs> So you want do you want to spend the week working on trying to create a train gun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're gonna go get the. You're gonna get. Well, the you would, he would do, the train gun. It would simply be darts holding the same substance. Yeah. So, so I can get the substance for all of us. Yeah. Um. So I'll say. It doesn't even have to like. It doesn't really have to be contain this the, the same substance because they can just be the tips could just be dipped in it like like right. a normal blow dart, but it's a gun form instead of a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did Wordos ever actually accurate? Oh, yeah. is my question. Oh yeah, I mean there, there was literally like tribes in Africa and stuff that used blow darts. Damn. I remember a Tim Allen movie. I remember I, like Jungle to Jungle. Something. I think it was Jungle. Or he's got like a Jungle kid. to Jungle. Yeah. And he's got to kill a fly with the dart. Mm-hmm. And ends up knocking out someone on the plane. Mm-hmm. Jungle to jungle. Okay. <laughs> Lots. I'm tired of here being like, like, I don't remember that part of Rocky Horror, Horror Picture, Picture Show. Picture show. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's fucking cool. Hmm. Just for, um, remember, I got you that. I found that special. Um, Apothecary for a D&D thing um, with a bunch of weird uh, potion recipes. Um, there's one called Midnight Oil. Um, you use it in, in an oil lantern. Um, and if you 
if you, any creature that stays in the light emitted by this oil for a full eight hours, they get all the benefits of a long rest without needing to actually sleep. Oh, We'd man. never have to sleep. Oh, man. Again! Oh, dude, it's a rare potion. <laughs> it's a DC, a, a 20 DC to make. Um, Malcolm is going to be like on Adderall. And the ingredients are, <laughs> <laughs> and the ingredients are going to be difficult to find. But it's, it's something that's out there. So if you guys were in a pinch and needed something like that. Malcolm's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but just, no, I want to see if there's a sleeping potion in here. Oh, you can make smoke bombs. Alchemist Fire, Oil of Slipperiness, Potion of Animal Friendship, Potion of Fire Breath, Potion of Growth, Potion of Giant Strength, Potion of Clairvoyance, Potion of Flying. I believe I can fly. So is next session gonna be the, 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 the big fight with the Emperor or is it Yeah, okay. okay. It'll be next so be, it'll be in person again? Yeah, as long as everybody's cool with that. Yeah. I guess. Assassin's blood. <laughs> well, as, long pizza, as, yeah. Not, as long as it's not January seventh, because I think that's That's the wife's birthday, so that's not gonna happen. Yeah. But plus I think that's the white elephant party for November and Eric. So that's... Pretty much only get to see those guys whenever they have a game night, so I always go for that. <laughs> All right, so um, you're going to be looking at about 300 gold pieces for enough of this stuff to spread around for your use. Okay. Um, you find an apothecary that knows a good recipe for such a thing. You flash your regulator's badge to let you then know that you are on business for side. the king. Because um, they do, when you ask for a sleeping potion as strong as what you need, they do look at you a little sideways, but... Yeah, no. And in the quantity you're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> You don't um, that stuff into a, the right river, you put an entire city to sleep. Um, <laughs> so was that... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how we could uh, take the, the statues. Oh, dear God. <laughs> statues. We were talking Statue. about taking one before, now we're going to take both of them. <laughs> yes! <laughs> can't, um, somebody be can't believe somebody roofied the entire city. I can't believe it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> um... Is this something that once the arrows are dipped, we can kind of like keep them in storage, or is this something the that best dries way off? for something to you, for you know, for this the situation you're going to would simply be dump it into the bottom of your quiver, and so all of the arrows that you all twenty would be. Dang. And you have a quiver holding with like different pockets, I think. So I, you'd import in one section of your quiver. I think I've yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's going like a up to, holding. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, in, in this case, the potion is going to be enough to spread over the tips of. Yeah, 60 arrows. And then 18 javelins. And then six long objects, such as bows, quarter staffs, or spears. You can, fit stuff, you can fit a lot of stuff in your pocket. Yeah. Call me sticky fingers for nothing. Long objects, you can just stick right in there. Yeah. <laughs> With the sticky bandits. <laughs> Matthew, I thought it. <laughs> I didn't want to say, but I thought it. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's what the sleeping poison is going to cost. Okay, poison? So you want to create a dark gun, right? Yes. Let's go ahead and bring up the. Because I mean, I know I can make guns. It's just a matter of can I can I design a air canister or something to use to fire the darts with? Because you really can't propel them with with gunpowder, probably. That would be a little bit much. Well, well, maybe you might be able to create a small charge. 
that won't have as much range as a typical gun. You would, because if you use the amount that you use to propel a bullet, yeah, you just destroy the dart. Could um, you use like a crossbow? I mean, I could use any of those weapons. I'm, I'm, I'm proficient in them. But it sounds more fun to build a dart gun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if I roll, about, if I roll really shitty and can't make one. What about um, um, <laughs> um, when we were younger, the rubber band guns? So the rubber band gun, you would put one in like shot? a not not a slingshot. No, it's like a plastic gun. You like wrap the rubber band around rub, rub, it, and then you pull the trigger. Well, yeah, and you pull the one with the plastic wheel, yeah. and, and you then you can put pieces. multiple. Yeah, you could do something like that. What the heck is it? What? It's a Gatling rubber band gun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know what It's got that a little notch in the front that you put the rubber band on. Where I was at. And it's got like a wheel on on the back end where the the you hammer would be. The rubber band. So you put a, you put a rubber band over the front. You put it over the wheel. You move the wheel back. You put another rubber band over. And when you fire, it just simply moves the wheel forward and lets the rubber band go. Yeah. Wow. That sounds uh, fun. There might have been a reason why I never had it. <laughs> They had some really uh, interesting ones too. That like literally, you could put like a hundred rubber bands on. Yeah. <laughs> like I think that's what my band. brother brought to school, and he got, got in a lot, lot of trouble. Oh, I can oh, imagine. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Which especially, was it Corey? As, especially if he was shooting. It was Corey. Yeah. Yeah. Those things hurt. It was Corey. I remember Hornets. <laughs> remember Hornets? Yeah. Oh, the paper clips with the it, you, you like the paper thing? You put a thumb pack keep... or something in it? We didn't even do that. We just fold the paper a bunch of times and. Oh no, we used to we used to put like a paper clip. You guys were evil. Yeah. Wow. What? Those things hurt like a bitch. <laughs> concussive cartridge. That sounds fun. I mean, I, if hell, I, I'll make a concussive cartridge if that'll knock somebody out. Knock the fuck out. <laughs> they can't work for a week. Uh, no, or, that's or flashbang. That's two d six thunder Ooh, damage. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have flashbang grenades? Flashbang. I want to blind some people. Let's see. Concussive and flashbang grenades, just people. Ma, 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 <laughs> ma, ma. Damn, damn, I didn't see it. Suppressing fire! Alright, so what's the design you have in, in mind for the. What way do you want to go with I grew. the dark gun? It was a dark gun. Because <laughs> I think. And I, think, I still think gunpowder is overkill. So gunpowder have would to, be loud. Yeah, so I'd have to, like rig up some kind of compressed air. Is that even a thing? Probably not. It's probably not a technology right now. Is there a magic crystal that you can put to power it to kind of like how we're using the, the powered crystals for the hover bikes, but instead of moving the object, it moves a smaller object? I would almost wonder, maybe not necessarily that, but maybe there's... Is, is there some kind of magic crystal or something that... Maybe does. Is there a spell that, that that throws out air? Does the Tesla gun exist in this universe, and can it knock someone out? You guys got hit with it early on in the campaign. What's that? You guys got hit with one early. In... With what? The Tesla. um. Yeah, the the Tesla device. The, the robot. Electric, the Lee electric gun that you guys got stunned with right when you got back to Paul Haas. When uh, Ardun. Oh, yeah, like a stun gun, yeah. 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 yeah um, so those exist, but they're in the possession of the Seraphis. I have seven crystals from the robot. Which I believe you're using at least some of them to power your hover bike. Um, so you're looking for something that would create air or. I'm digging in. Or something that's like magnetic field, but instead of magnetic, it throws it. It would have to be pretty strong to fling a dart any any respectable distance. Sure. Um, would you like to contact your favorite neurotic wizard inventor? Of course. Yes. No, not the wizard. My father? No. I made exploding lemons for my friend. Uh, he oh, died. Jesus Christ. Because remember, he has invented, uh, the, uh, uh, he has created the um, ability to collect natural gas and do oh, it in right. shape. Yes. So I do he want to might have him. an idea of, of how to compress air into like a cylinder or something. Yeah. 
Might be yeah. Right. Um, he returned to Anexa, so would you like to take a trip over? Yes. Yeah. All right. All of us. All of us, or oh, yeah. just him? It's, I mean, we're not gonna like go too deep into role play here, but didn't we have a key to get back to Anexa faster, or was that Paul? Yeah, you have. Uh, yeah. 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 You can go to. Um, Clambox. Clambox. Yeah. Um, just have to keep the door open in, in your room at the tavern or whatever so yeah. you can get back. Um, so you are you go back to Anexa and you are able to track him down. Um, you tell him what you are trying to do. Uh, he has collected a substance that he refers to as butane. Um, and... Um, is it, and you are as you construct the a basic pistol shape and the barrel, um, which is going to take most of a day to get all those pieces made. I'm not even going to make you ma- uh, do a tinker check. Um, so you build the basic construction of the gun. That's like you're, you're too high a fucking level now. Just you just make it. Well, yeah, because <laughs> and this is like a downgrade of yeah. things you've already made. Yeah. So you deal with that part. He creates um, uh, these butane canisters for you that go into the. Um, handle of the, 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 the pistol okay. and when you uh, f- fire off the trigger it uh, creates a burst of flame in the back that creates a sudden burst of air um, the explosive force of the butane coming out essentially pushes the dart out of the gun um, so if you want to go ahead and write down you have a trank pistol um, we'll call it a range of an outside range of 100 feet sound fair. 50 is inside range. I think that's fine. I just need to figure out how to add notes and do it deep Um, And we'll say you spend uh, about 100 gold on materials to put this together. Um, he gives you a set you can add to your inventory. How much did you say it was? About 100 gold worth of materials. Okay. Um, And you have, uh, so you have the trank pistol, you have you have three butane canisters, um, each which has about a hundred shots in it. Um, and you make up, what do you say, about 20 uh, darts? Yeah. And you can you have those either constructed to hold the f- fluid inside and, you know, a syringe a, a kind of setup, or you can have it so it's just a solid weight with a needle on it that you can... I said, well, solid weight needle probably makes more sense. Um, and is, it is reload one. Yeah. So each shot you have to take. If you want to spend an extra 100 gold, you can put together a second pistol so you have two, and then you can reload them. What couldn't keep do something like a six shooter. That would probably be difficult. That for... would be a little more complicated. I'm thinking a breech loaded kind of deal. You're gonna want like a couple of them. Yeah, I'll make another one. Okay, so 200 gold total. Um, uh, is that plus one or anything to attack rolls or anything, or just a that standard pistol? Oh, uh, with the sleeping potion. How long is that gonna knock him out for? Um. The potion that you paid for, we're talking about uh, eight hours sleeping time. <laughs> and a very high DC to resist, so sweet. It's too bad none of us are stuffy enough to actually pretend to be a servant. Put it in the drink. Oh, I'm invisible. I could <laughs> fucking get in there. You could. It adds a lot of complexity to the plan, though, you guys. Are, uh, I mean, yeah, that's the option. You could go super stealthy about it and... I have a disguise kit. <laughs> yeah, you do. I have the mask of many faces. Well, technically, yeah, I, I have it right now, but you should take it. Can I get there the day beforehand and try to? Oh, you uh, the the king has suggested that you all get there a few days ahead of time. Okay. okay. Um, so you guys can get the you can get the ship thing set up. Could we knock out the emperor? That's that's not going to be an option. No. <laughs> <Damn> <laughs> the emperor is not going to be at the quorum. Anyway, oh, it was so worth a shot. The can Elder I, Council represents Arania in the quorum. Can I sneak into the Emperor's household and try to kill him in his sleep? 
It's significantly more difficult. You saw how much... <laughs> <laughs> the only reason that um, Alaric, Alaric was, was able to get in and out of there is because of his ability to jump through shadows, and even then he almost got caught. Yeah, he did. But I am death. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, so you made two of those pistols. Yes. Um, you got a shit ton of that super strong, yep. uh, legal in most parts of the, the continent, uh, sleeping potion. Do we know? Well, like, yeah, if, about are these people going to be drinking a lot? I mean, it's pot, there's probably going to be refreshments at some point. Um, so your two options are the, you know, shock and awe drop right into the middle, which is what you were planning on doing up to this point. You know, more direct confrontation. You might get take a little bit of damage on your way in, um, or you can try something more cloak and dagger, which means more things can go wrong, like somebody getting refreshment and drinking it. Shut up! Before, before everybody else drinks it, and they just pass the fuck out. And raise their <laughs> Remember, you're only tra- also only trying to get you're trying to get rid of the guards in the room. Yeah. Not the you want the uh, delegates of the quorum to be awake because. The king wants to address them. I mean, we could just kidnap them, so... Let's just drop it. Let's just drop it. Guns blazing, got it. We're gonna pull... We're, we're, we're gonna pull the boondock scenes at the end of the movie where they jump into the courtroom. It's been a while, sorry. They go into the courtroom and they're like... This is weird, because I was more picturing when they fell out of the air vent <laughs> and got all tangled up in the ropes and they're just shooting... Well, that's, they're, they're, shooting every, they're shooting everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they go into the courtroom and they're, like, making everybody watch, like... Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, any input from Echo yeah. on any of this? From the peanut gallery? No, no. Okay. Um, so there's enough for you to have arrows, 20 arrows, um, with the stuff on it. You to have 20 arrows, her to have 20 bolts, although her uh, crossbow only holds five at a time. I think, if I recall correctly. The Alaric crossbow? Yeah, I think it was five, a magazine of five. Um, but there isn't going to be a crap ton of guards in there, so as long as you guys all hit your shots, you should be fine. Now you jinxed us. Um... And as long as they don't resist the poison, but like I said, it's a super high DC. So then you shoot them shoot twice. <laughs> Malcolm doesn't miss. Um, all right. Does. 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 So anything <laughs> else before you guys leave Paul House and go to the Imperial City? Come again. I wonder if Al House has anything that's sneak related. Oh, shit. What'd you do? I was changing the year instead of the... Sorry, you guys missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I would say... I would say don't worry about sneaking. We're just going to drop right in. All right. Knock out all the guards. Yep. All right. Um, so, King wants to leave on the morning of the 50th. Or uh, late morning, early afternoon. Actually, though. Of the 55th. Yep. Is there anything else you do doing while you're in Paul? Is the quorum open to the public at all, or is it just representatives and... I mean, high, uh, super high-end nobles might be able to get a tour of the place when it's not being used. Um, kind of like you can tour the capital, but... Would we be able to get a tour? No, they, these guys don't know us. You'd have to, to get talk to the right people and get fake IDs, essentially. Make up, you know, basically, you'd have to create. I these love foreign, Renzo like, von Metterhorn. Yeah. <laughs> um. Valentina Flores. <laughs> uh, so, anything else while you're in Pelos? No. No. All right. The only thing I was no. thinking about no. is if we drop in. Take a look at the layout. They could, they could try to get out. How many doors are there? Um. Okay, so. You bring up a valid point. Um, each of these balconies, uh-huh. um, at the back, so the taller ones, those are the um, foreign countries, uh, Rumlin, uh, Teresia, Kartanak, and Kisena. Um, their door, they have one door at the back of each of their balconies that goes into their, you know, uh, I don't want to say quarters, but like, uh, 
embassy, Chambers. essentially. Yeah. Um, as I, that was the ori- original possibility. I told you you could choose one of the embassies and enter from the side. Um, so that's where those doors lead. The one for the the shorter one is the representatives from Arania. Theirs goes out into the main lobby and out the front doors. But you, it is possible you may want to find a way to keep those doors from being usable. Could we put like sleeping grenade grenades at each door? Like well, beforehand? We don't want to knock out the representatives. We just you also that would mean getting into each of oh, the yeah. embassies. Fuck. Yeah. Dealing with the guards that they had left in the embassies. Wait, wait. There's gotta be something to do. The chime opening only opens, doesn't it? Doesn't lock. Yeah. Damn. Damn. That's great. <laughs> Alhais, let's see what he's got. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if we can get pick up something the lock doors. That'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> Rick, we're making Matt take out the books. <laughs> he's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> so I think I might have an idea of something. I'm just going to humber off the top of my head. But we'll see what... I find me, it makes sense, though, because we don't want them to get out. We, we want to bar the yeah. doors if we they're, can. They're, they're going to run. And if we, we drop down in there breaking glass, people are going to be like... What fuck. the fuck? Ow. I'm mm. out. Especially once I start fucking spinning around like fucking white earth. And shooting fire, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Alright, so you make your way over to Alhais. <clears throat> you let him know you are on business uh, for the king. Does that mean we get even more of a discount? <laughs> Alright, just get an all highs tattoo. <laughs> He's gonna look at Zuko <laughs> <Right>? again. <laughs> I, hey, that was my idea too. <laughs> the embroidery. Let me, let me just slap the all highs, uh, the all highs uh, ba- uh, logo on my ass. And then... <laughs> we've gotten a lot of stuff from them over the few months we've been yeah. around. Moon them for a discount. <laughs> you have their logo on your armor, though. I think we all do. Do we all, or is it just you? I think we all do. You think yeah. we all? I think you asked for one on your armor for an extra discount. I remember that. I feel like I remember that conversation. Because I know we put their you their logo on, on our, our tent. tent. Yeah, I remember that. And I think also which on is it? On the well, cart you really too. got ripped off on that deal because you rarely put that tent up anywhere anyone's gonna see it. So. <laughs> now that we became rich like overnight, yeah. It wasn't overnight. We work hard for the money. Except for our passive ship income, we don't work hard for that. Though. No, my idea. Thank you. <laughs> royalty idea yes yes that's definitely paid for itself like i'm the engineering mind and this guy is the money guy yeah because i'm cheap <laughs> so there's the face of the money maker oh yeah i mean we're 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 we're, we're 100 percent gonna start a car dealership <laughs> like, yeah nope i'm hoping there's something off the top of my head i just got it just got even better all right uh-oh um, you explain to Alhai what what do you tell him? So uh, we're here on business of the king. Um, we need something to lock doors from a distance. Interesting. Multiple I have, doors. Preferably, if we can do them all at once, rather than having to lock doors single, you know, one at a time. I got the chime of opening. I was wondering if there's some kind of something that works somewhat in reverse. And you say you are on business from the king, so I, I take it my name will be coming up in your next conversation? Yes. It will. Are you Alhai? Yes, it is Alhai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is your bazaar? Yes, this is my bazaar. Oh, okay. <laughs> I happen to have a very strange... Strange objects, one-time use, that doesn't fit many situations, but may be exactly what you need. Quite expensive, but since you are on business from the king, 
Just uh, promise me you will put in a good word and uh, maybe there will be some royal contracts involved and uh, I'll pull the subject out for you for free. Do it. I'll bring you up. Alright, he goes into... Uh, this is the first time we've actually met Alhai. Yeah, it is true. <laughs> Really is no, I think no, I mean, no, sure. right? I'm pretty I sure we've never met. Alhai like, is the one that made the diaper bag for you. I know that was it. Much. Okay, yeah. so yeah, sometimes he switches out with his brothers because it he kind of like rotates around to which because the, there's one the one in Anexa, one in Palhas, there's one way down on the coast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have you have run into. I just don't think it's been brought up that yes, yeah. this is the Alhai. Um, but yeah, he's the one who made the diaper bag for you. He's the one that made the actual deal for the discount. Yeah, it was, okay. like, a, it was, it was like a diaper bag of holding. Yes. Oh, yeah, for you. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so he goes into the back room. He comes funny. out. Yeah, that was great. That was great. With a small wooden box, we opens it up like carefully, and though. shows you the small gem. Um, he says, if you... Uh, this is very fragile. Um, if broken within a room, all of the doors... Um, windows, entryways of any kind um, in the room that you are in will no longer lead where they're supposed to. They will instead lead back. cause someone to re-enter the room. Essentially, it creates, turns the room into a pocket dimension that cannot be left, and any attempt to leave... What size? Well, he says by room. I think he means just whatever... Yeah, whatever room you're okay, in. Okay, sometimes it comes... Yeah. Yeah, the entire, no matter how big it is, um, you drop it, or if you break it in within a room, um, and it is very fragile, he says. Um, cool, so don't let me and Zuko hold it. If any of, if any, any attempt to leave the room, even if you break a hole in the wall, you will find yourself coming back into the room by like some totally. other means. So, it doesn't lock the doors, but if they try to go out them, they'll just find themselves coming back in another like kind of like the, house, like the dollhouse <laughs> in uh, Warehouse 13. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, several thousand gold piece item, but I will let you have it for free. Just make sure that... Uh, I will go tell the king right now. Fantastic. I have a question. I have a question. Yes? So when people so when want people to want eventually to leave, leave, how do you go? Oh, yeah. uh, the, effect, the effect only lasts yeah, for yeah. Uh, about an hour. Good question. <laughs> The, the effect lasts for an hour. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 So if somebody's outside of the room and they try to come in, do they just go right back out into the hallway they were in before, <laughs> or do they, or could they, or can they come in, but they then just once they're in out. the room, they can't, they can't get back get out. out? You can enter the room. Okay. Um, but once you're in, you're in. <laughs> so that means we're in for an hour. An hour. Um, but then. Yep. Or out. I don't know. That's fine. These guards are gonna be asleep for fucking eight. So yeah, I don't know. No, that's <laughs> fine. But what about escaping? Not no no not escaping. But doesn't one of those doors lead to where we need to be with the delegates? No, they're in the room. Yeah. yeah. They're... Oh, they're in the room. So yes, that means they're. they're in the room. You said the king? you wanted to keep them from getting out. You said the the king, right? Yes. Each one of these. So that means the king's gonna have to come in with us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, he's coming. Okay. In with you. That'll be dealt with in a little bit. Okay, because like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we could always put him in the wizard store if we need to. Oh, <laughs> no. oh god, no. He has a better plan. He has a better. I thought about that and. Mask as many not, faces. Does smell like horseshit in there? Probably. <laughs> he will forever. I, th I think we cleaned it, but I think it will smell like horseshit forever. <laughs> for Someday <laughs> after you're all dead and Malcolm is still you know, wandering around, he'll. Because we couldn't kill him? Just for old time's sake, he'll open the door for the first time in 80 years. Ah, oh, shit. It still smells. <laughs> So there's nowhere to go. It's a pocket dimension. <laughs> You'd have to leave that thing hanging open, open for, for a like couple days. Yeah. A while. <laughs> Don't do it at the end, or he's gonna keep wondering why <laughs> it smells like shit. Actually, I was just in the inn. I had the door open while I was going to, to an exit, so it was like a whole day that door was open. <laughs> no, yeah. but you, you didn't have it open. Like you didn't have it open to your pocket. Your okay. closet. True, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> um, good point. <laughs> the, just the doorway between the two was open, not the. Not the, Not the storage door. space. <laughs> All right, so you um, you guys done with your business in Paul Haas then? I think so. Yeah. All right, so uh, you say uh, the morning of the 55th, 
Um, you say goodbye to our get, I assume, and return her to an exo? Yes. All right. Um, I smack her on her ass while she goes through the door. Um, <laughs> while you're there, uh, Clambox says, Hey, sorry, forgot to mention, Courier came back um, and uh, had this for you. Remember, you sent a message to the uh, sandwich, I think, to the yes, and said, uh, "Have a nice day." Yeah. Um, uh, the message returned a few days ago. I forgot to give it to you. That's okay. All right. So he hands you uh, yeah. a, a note. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Slam. <laughs> Slam. What? You slammed the door. Oh. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, um, uh, leading up to this. Um, you actually haven't seen the king in a in a day or two. Um, you were it's okay. <laughs> uh, Ethid was still around. She informed you he is making his own way to the imperial city. Um, give, they give you a new key for your door, um, and she tells you uh, when you are ready, you're you're supplied up and everything else. Use this. Um, you know, meet us sometime early morning or around noon on the fifty fifth. Um, I will. She lets you know she will be waiting for you in a tavern, or in, uh, more appropriately. So I'm sorry. What was? What's the key for? For us? For a doorway to where? To the Imperial City. Okay. Uh, I should don the mask of many faces, though. Uh, we have to get the, well, the airship's already on the way, isn't it? Yes. Yes. It is. it's, yeah, it's been parked there. He's. Uh, they're staying. Away from the city itself, kind of like staying around the outskirts and doing little odd jobs in the small towns around it. Are we going to find seaweed on I... our ship again? Yeah, jeez. Because I think we found like a little like a little clearing or whatever in the city for him to land the ship in. Mm-hmm. In between, Yes, houses. which you haven't discussed with him or anything yet. Yeah. That's the one next thing you have to deal with. We're um, just going to have to knock out all the people that live around there. <laughs> um... You mentioned this idea in the in one of the first meetings. Yeah. Um, Sebastian has sent people to look into it for you, so okay. you'll have more information now on that in a little bit. Just get the um, town to sleep. But where's the water tower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the cistern, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The well. The well. <laughs> I still can't believe you fell asleep naked in a well. Uh, yeah. So Ethan tells you to meet her uh, when you get to the Imperial City. Meet her at a tavern or tavern slash inn called the Grey Gauntlet. The Grey Goblet. The Grey Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Grey Gauntlet. Gauntlet. That sounds familiar. Infinity Gauntlet. I thought it was gonna be like the Thirsty Pony or something. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Pony. <laughs> I was actually hoping for a deep pool. The, the brass pole, but no, I, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I was hoping for a deep pool reference, but it turns out I never came up with a, a name for this tavern. But you guys have heard about it before, um, just not by name, I guess. Um, so you'll get some clues as to why this uh, inn is significant um, to the history of somebody you all. know. Um, you can't see it on our. You can't see what our. You can't oh, see the map. map. Oh, I can tilt it down. You can't see me on it either, so... I can see more of you than me. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not wide. Damn I... it! <laughs> <laughs> Just sit on the corner of the table. Um, Alright, so... Uh, you return Ethid. Not Ethid, Argit. Um, no more business in Palahas. You guys are ready to take off? I think so. You guys can't think of anything, can you? We got... The sleeping think, stuff. Yeah, I think we got everything that we would need. Do we have leftovers? In case we need it later. Leftover what? Leftover. Sleeping potion. Ah. Um. Because I got 20 darts. I have 20. Have Everybody pretty much 20. has 20. Also, you have a small vial. Uh, maybe enough to either, you know, fill with quiver again. More. Um, or if you wanted to put small doses and, and drinks and stuff like that, that's a possibility too. Um, so yeah, you'll have a little bit left over. Small after. doses, no, just... yeah. or if you want to pour, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, empty and pour it. Well, Rip them, ass. Sleep um, for a fucking month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, if you guys are, uh, you guys get your stuff all gathered up, you finalize your tab at the uh, Lucky Hawk. Um, where do you go to 
make your transition. I mean, I would probably just ask if the uh, innkeeper will let us use the spare room. Don't worry, we won't be coming back out. <laughs> Seems a little confused, but okay. Uh, I haven't that way! <laughs> still a couple hours until the cleaning lady goes in, uh, so just make sure you're out by then, I guess. Yeah. Um, Alright. You won't see us leave, but we'll be gone. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll miss you. Don't be a stranger. You haven't been back in a while, so yeah. hope to see you again soon. Hopefully. All right. So uh, you guys go into a small, little, empty room, um, put the doorknob on the wall, stick this new key in, and make your way through the doorway. And that is we are we're going to go to break. That would be funny. Put our magic door in a room as like a closet. Hit record. Hit the button, Matt. <laughs> hit the button. Hit the button. All right, we are back. Hit the button. Make sure you tap it gently. All right, so as you step through the door, uh, who's going through first? Oops, sorry. So, who's going through first? Uh, Malcolm, you go first. I no, Malcolm always goes last. That's a roll. Malcolm always goes last. I'll go first. I push Mira through. That's unfortunate because uh, mm-hmm. you push her through. She smashes face first into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mira, you find yourself in a ridiculously narrow alleyway uh, between two buildings. Um, barely I look enough... back at Malcolm. I was like, you could have broken my nose. <laughs> uh, basically, barely enough room for you to, to walk straight out of. Jesus. Um, you're, the door opened on the side of one building and then you ran right into the side of the other building and the, the pathway between the two is barely shoulder width. And you are oh a broad God. shoulder bitch. So, <laughs> is that uh, so any you kind damage? of as you make your way out. <laughs> is that any damage? <laughs> they should take, they should one, take one point of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> um... You see, look to your right, and you see the thoroughfare. Um, with lots of people and carts and stuff going back and forth. Um, the noise of the you know, boisterous city. Uh, so you make your way that direction. The rest of you follow. Close, close the door behind you. Oh, uh, the appearance that I take with a mask of many faces is uh, long red hair, blue eyes, and freckles. All right, freckles. Freckles. Are there a lot of freckles in Arania? Um, not a horribly I, common. I uh, guess there are what, a lot what, of people uh, around species. By the way. Human. Human. Okay, not a horribly common human. Um, especially not in Anacreomont, but it does happen. Uh, mostly people who. I don't have a map of uh, Sacramanda, but there is a. Region that is 90% dwarven, and the humans that um, live in that area um, tend to have red hair, freckles, stuff like that. Um, I didn't plan this, I just like. So, un- you, uh, you are going to draw attention, but not in a negative way. Um, not like your hair would. Yeah, not like my hair would. <laughs> um. So, it's too bad you can't like change like your body at all too because I you all like, kind of have to like, you were able to walk that. straight out but you kind of all kind of have to angle yourselves to slip out between these two buildings and you're immediately in a rush of people uh, but you just miss you <laughs> from, <laughs> from the alleyway you are um, as you exit onto the street where in the heck is Wolfric? Is he on the ship? Isn't he on the ship? Or did we take him with Yes, him? I think uh, that's right. You didn't bring him to no, the crew. No, this would be dangerous. Right, so... so my, uh, ba- my fur baby is in the ship. Okay, so... Um, the four of you walk out. Uh, Jack's with you, right? Would Jack draw attention? Because he's in the sun. You have a little cloak for him, remember? It keeps yeah. him from direct sun exposure. Yeah, he literally has like a, like, a, like, a du- like a mini duster like my own. So, yeah, he, he could be first <laughs> off on your shoulder and he'll be fine. Yeah. Again, pro- might like you. Pro- oh wow, monkey! Uh, but not like something's up with these people, kind of thing. Uh, so you uh, walk out in the main thoroughfare, and you, again, just a compared to any other city you've been in, the foot traffic is absolutely insane. Like um, New York. This is a horribly. Uh, this is New York, essentially. Um, I'm gonna tell Jack to steal some coin purses. Yeah. Okay. Why not? 
<laughs> so you order him to uh, sneak up on some people. Sorry, how many how many uh, passes are you gonna have to make? Like three. I, I haven't I haven't had him do anything, so I, I kind of yeah. wanna. All right. Um, so uh, three passes. First one's mediocre. Uh, second one, um, he ends up bringing back a bag of junk. Um, last one's very, very good. He manages to snag a coin purse off of a noble. Um, so you manage to rake up about, we'll say, uh, 300 gold pieces total. Most of it Dark, in that gun's paid for. Yeah. <laughs> that, last, uh, that last pass. Um, but... Um, once you're able to orient yourself with the massive crowd of people passing forth and get into the flow of traffic, you quickly find uh, the Great Gauntlet. The Great Gauntlet is a large, uh, almost taking up two city blocks uh, building. It is made up of four um, outer buildings on the corners with a, set, a kind of foyer building in the center. So you enter about halfway down the block um, into the center. Uh, center building. Um, the the structure overall looks kind of blocky and bland, uh, but the massive the size of it kind of blows you away, and that triggers a little bit of a memory for all of you. You're not sure why something like this sounds like something you've heard about before. But you make your way into the center building. Look at Ix on here. Why oh, did I do that? Is this ingrained in your memory? Mm -hmm. It is. Just like if I were to say, I'll make them pay. <laughs> to just a picture of his eyes? Yeah, just a picture of his eyes. Definitely just an Ohio thing. I saw a billboard that literally said, you know what, what I do. do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is this I'm like, he makes him pay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you not heard of that before? No. You ever heard Tim Isley? I don't think so. What? What? Don't kill me. Have you like ever watched TV in your life? What about like JJ <laughs> Wentworth? That's where you forget. I have three kids. So what's going on TV 24-7? If you're in a structured settlement and you need cash now. Cash now. <laughs> Call J.G. Wentworth. It's my money and I want it now. <laughs> like, I don't have, like, cable or anything anymore, so, like, I don't get... The main reason why I know all of them is because sick days at home... There's no days at home watching Prices Right. Springer. <laughs> yeah. Those commercials okay. were deep. See, that's where Very that's deep. where you guys and I are different. I wasn't really allowed to watch TV much when I was a kid. Shoot, watching the Prices Right when you were home. We sick had TV, yeah, but we still oh, had those commercials all the time. Bob Barker. I think I when I finally was able to like watch TV like all the time was when I was a teenager, and even then they would they would take over the TV. I'm still looking for some of them, I'm just putting together all the tavern things. So, like, now as an adult, I get to watch more of the fucking <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody has Apple, Apple TV. Ted Lasso is pretty no, good. No, I wish I did. I wish I had Apple TV because I want to watch John Stewart's new show. Um, I stopped watching the Daily Show when he left. I'd love to. Start. I don't know. I don't know what their restrictions are on. So, Cece, on what it. you're saying is that you need an adult. I have Apple TV. I'll share my damn password if I can. <laughs> All right. So you guys, this is already on my damn HBO. <laughs> uh, the central building, which is slightly s smaller than the four outer buildings, um, and the central building is essentially a square hallway. Um, uh, you are immediately met by a very large old oil painting that looks to have suffered smoke damage, but it is sitting inside of a fresher frame. Um, so obviously this was transferred from wherever it was. Um, the fuck was that? That was the barkeeper. Um, he sounds very gruff. Uh, you see this old, this very um, old smoke damage painting of a not. 
not a like <laughs> not a noble family, but uh, somewhat like having I mean, whatever the middle equivalent of middle class is. Um, family of five, um, and you don't recognize anybody in the painting specifically, um, but the young girl, age probably about eight, something about her short hair and grumpy com- complexion just seems oddly familiar to you. Is it Ethan? Is it Siri? Roll, roll, inve- uh, roll, roll perception check. Roll, take it closer. Oh, what's... That's what, wisdom? I'm thinking I'm proficient in it, so 20, 30, 20. Okay. Um, it definitely looks like a younger version of Ethan. Holy shit. Um, so, I guess at this point, you remember um, Ethan told you that she grew up um, in a family who owned the largest uh, inn and tavern in the Imperial City. However, the inn and uh, um, you know burned down when her family was killed by the necromancer that was out for revenge against her. Um... Uh, she was. They always wanted to go into the family business and run this tavern, but um, she wanted to be an adventurer. But that incident is what her, caused her to stop adventuring and settle down and make her uh, her own tavern, the Fool's Purse, which ironically, in the end, was burned down too. <laughs> but, um, this appears to be a, of life. this appears to be a recreation <laughs> of her family's uh, business. Huh. How come I'm rem- remembering shit about your significant other? From like like <laughs> two years ago. Yeah, yeah, this was brought up, I think, around. This was like ten. The, the massacre at Elta. It's like ten. So you're like, hey, See, so, this... so 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 Mira, that that's your lady. Oh my god. Uh, that picture over there, that's your lady. Hello, your other lady. Around, like, what are you <laughs> she was a cute child, even if she looked a little grumpy. Hey, she's eight. <laughs> she is eight in that picture. I am not going into this. Malcolm, how dare you? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> SVU theme starts up. I didn't do it. Okay, so you, uh, after re- recognizing her, um, you realize people are trying to crowd in it behind you. So you start making your way around this square hallway. You realize that each one, each one of the four buildings, is its own. Uh, bar um, with an upstairs inn, um, but each seems to belong to, uh, to be, be geared towards a different class, um, and all are contained within this one building. All of them, again, are much larger than you're used to, um, but you make your way around until you finally find one that looks um, extremely rowdy, uh, lower class. Did somebody are we gonna gamble? The inn? What's that? It's a horse outside. Um. But you find one that, that find one that looks kind of lower class, like you're used to, rowdy. Um, there is a bard playing on a stage that is behind um, bars, kind of like one of those uh, country bars you'd find with the chain link fence, keeping the uh, performer from being hit by flying objects and shit. <laughs> so, um, as you peek into this one, thinking this is probably the one that you're supposed to be at, um, you do catch a glimpse of Ethan sitting at a table. Her armor is covered by her cloak, and she has her hood up, tra- uh, looking like she's trying to avoid being recognized. Um, but she's sitting at a dark table in the corner. Uh, I assume you all go in and join her? Yes. Uh, as you approach, she sees you and signals the bartender to bring over a round of drinks. All right, glad you made it. What do you think of the city so far? Too rowdy. A lot of people. Things go unnoticed. <laughs> That's very true. Always makes me a little uncomfortable, especially after all those years in Elton. But. Um, as this conversation starts. Um, the bard finishes the song he was on when you came in, um, and uh, a bottle is thrown at the the bars in front of him, which he kind of flinches at, but it looks like he's gotten used to it. <laughs> it's already happened a few times. All right, thank you. Um, Jesus, anybody... is he is he like Jester from uh, the Witcher? No, he's not bad. It's just that's this. It's that kind of bar. Like okay. all, everybody in here is too drunk. 
um, should have been stopped being served a while ago. Um, but the bars, but the inn's still making money. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's no liability on tavern owners in this era. Um, but uh, thank you. Um, any requests? He kind of said, you, you can hear from the tone of his voice, he doesn't even want to offer that option. Um, and sure enough, you hear a very drunk guy in the back play, Hills of Durham! And uh, you see the bard kind of rolls his eyes. This is obviously not the first time this guy has asked this. And he moves on. He's like, all right, anyway, this is Wonderwall. Um, <laughs> and starts into his next song. Um, uh, Ethan, all your drinks are brought over. And she says, uh, do you, anybody have the time? Don't you have a pocket watch? I think so, yeah. Yeah, you had a, you had a custom-made pocket yeah. watch. Yeah. Um, Check your pocket. So I whip it out. Okay, you realize even though that you left early morning, yeah. since you've jumped several time zones, <laughs> it is currently... Well, I'm sorry, no, you... I can't... I don't think you bought an enchanted pocket watch, so I think you have to adjust. It's fine. Yeah. So to you, according to your watch, it is about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and she says, oh, that's Paul has time, right? So she does the math. Okay, so it's about noon. Wow. So we went from like, we went from like West Coast to East Coast. Yeah. yeah. Um, she says, all right, uh, should be... Now, let's give him another half hour. Uh, we should be able to meet with the king uh, and the rest of them. They have a suite reserved upstairs that they'll be showing up in, in a little bit. But, um, so. so they have a door directly into a suite, and we had to go through a cramped alleyway? They're, they're using a different method of travel. Okay. Oh, okay. Flu powder. Diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. If you, you heard me say flu powder, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> um, they're using a different method of travel, um, not conducive to a uh, large group of people. Um, so, we'll... Uh, was a crowd. The alley didn't bother me, but it bothered Miro a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> we still have a few days until the the quorum is in session, so uh, of course we'll get you set up with rooms here. Um, Sebastian has some information that may be useful to you. I feel like the volume keeps adjusting itself. Yeah, like it keeps getting louder and louder. Yeah. Is it a TV or is it a voice meter? It might be iTunes itself. So doing something. It may also be Discord. So it sounds like when, like if Cece talks, it might adjust the volume down a little bit, gotcha. and then when she's silent, it goes back up. Gotcha. It gotcha. goes gotcha. way up. Um, so that that'll be what we're dealing with. Um, anything you guys need while we're in town? I don't think we need anything. You guys, can you guys think of anything we need? I think we're fairly decently prepared. I feel like. Is your ship uh, nearby? Oh, he's 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 close. Uh, he's, he's outside the town. Or he I should don't be know. outside the town. Okay, so I don't know when you last spoke with your pilot, but uh, probably should have him set up dock sometime soon, uh, before the end of the day, most likely. Why? Uh, the king said he said he uh, he might have need of the ship. Uh, take a short trip. I thought we were going to bring the ship in the day of in that little clearing. The secret, yes, that. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, there is a, uh, something that he, somewhere he needs to go and w was requesting use of your ship to do it. So That's fine. Oh, that's fine. Um, so if you could have them dock, we'll of course compensate you for uh, docking fees and all of that. Um, not really. Is it like a reimbursement thing? Do I have to show a receipt and then you give me the money back? Or... Uh, no, we know the rates. We'll give <laughs> <laughs> you enough to cover it. Um, Do you validate parking? <laughs> <laughs> so, in the meantime, drink up. So we have time to kill? So I, j j just, so I, just so I can ask for Zuko. 
Are, are you covering the drinks right now too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <Dick. laughs> so you guys, um, conversely, is there anything you want to bring up? Oh, by the way, Echo, how how would you describe your mood since the last vision? Uh. Are you positively glowing? <laughs> <laughs> Less gloomy, gloomy than probably. Than probably. Well, I'm sorry, what's what would have picked up on? She's less gloomy. Less gloomy. <laughs> so hopeful? Yeah, a little yeah, bit more hopeful, yeah. Okay, so there is a slight... Um, a little less There is a slight glow to her, um, and a warmth coming off of her. Um, a s- slight smell that reminds you of spring. Um, That's where I should start sneezing. <laughs> not not <laughs> but you know, like you know, the first rain of the season and uh, fresh uh, plants in bloom, stuff like that. Does somebody change their detergent for a reason? <laughs> I can't remember the last time I showered. I, I don't think we've ever role played that. I would hope that we would I shower. Would hope we would shower. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you guys didn't notice for the last six months. You haven't you bathed once. I uh, walk into them, they're like. <laughs> 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 so you haven't brought this vision up with anybody, right? No, I have not. No, I have not. Okay. Um, so you enjoy your drinks. The bard finishes again. Um, would this would, would this change be something that maybe somebody that is invested in Echo would notice? What it? <laughs> what is it? Um, <laughs> the, the effects aren't constant, but any time time she has a dramatic uh, or very intense mood, uh, there are things about her that changes the color of her skin, um, the smell, the temperature around her. Um, so when this happens, it does. It's definitely noticeable. Um, maybe, maybe a romantic interest would like to question her about it in front of everyone. <laughs> Not necessarily in front of everybody. Yeah, in front of anyone. I'll, 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 I'll get her eventually. You know, she's smelling good. <laughs> you up in that room. So you continue your drinks. The bar finishes again, um, and she's warm. <laughs> Giggity. There's uh, some scattered <laughs> off time applause. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you very much. Um, and you once again hear that drunk in the back. Play Hills of Doom. Somebody knock him out, please. Um, this t- at this point the bard has about fucking had it with this guy. <laughs> kind of slams his uh, his loot against the bars of the cage that is protecting him. He's like, "Listen, you inbred fuck." <laughs> I'm sure you have great memories of fucking your sister mother to that song. And you see the guy, like, reacting to it very slowly. Looks like he's trying to do math on his hands, and he mouths the words, uh, sister, mother, mother. Um, That's going to be a bar fight. But I was trained classically in Boheim, and I will not play that backwoods yokel anthem, <laughs> even if my life depended on it. And uh, like look, once the guy processes <laughs> the insults and knows enough to be offended, he gets up, almost flips the table, and starts heading towards uh, the cage. Every, the entire room starting to get very tense and rowdy. Um, Ethan says, all right. Um, I was going to say, do I pull out my... Do I pull out my... D- my reaper's hand? Your life does depend on it. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Something. Okay, um, we'll deal with that later. Um, so, Ethan says, all right, things are getting a little bit out of hand here. Maybe we should just go ahead and head on up before the guard ends up getting called in. Uh, I could just knock him out with a bottle. Okay, you want to risk getting in the middle of this? No one knows. Do you want to get detained? <laughs> I, mean, I could try to persuade him not to fight him. him. 
Well, this the guy's going after him, but the the bar's behind bars, so there they, there isn't actually any conflict that can really happen. There yeah, he is doing him to try to get out of there like and face him. Down. Down. What's that? What if I could try and persuade, persuade the guy persuade that's the guy angry that's to try and calm down, take, down a little bit? I take. I take I, t- I take a drink that I haven't finished yet. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Zuko, do you, do you have some of that sleeping potion? Yeah, okay. like one <laughs> one little dose. Yeah. I walk up to him. And I'm like, friend, stop. Take a drink. <laughs> still breathing very heavily and very angrily, still staring down the bar. Takes the cup from you. Takes a swig. Yes. <laughs> now listen, I was. Yes! You fucking genius! <laughs> I asked if there was extra. And just falls over into the nearby table, splitting it in half. <laughs> like, man can't hold his liquor! <laughs> what a damn shame! <laughs> the people at the table that he smashed angrily grab him up by the shoulders and start dragging him out of the tavern. <laughs> Not your problem anymore. <laughs> Then, yes, we turn around and walk out. <laughs> uh, no, before you can, though, however, the bar is like, hey, I like you guys. And he reaches into the, uh, the fancy hat he had sitting on the stage, the minuscule amount of tips he had, and like, here, yeah, that, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, you get uh, 20 silver. <laughs> You still have some of that potion left, so... Yeah, I still got some, yeah. Um, small dose. Bard seems to be in much better mood and starts going into a very jolly song. As I walk out, I'm going to yell back, Play Hills of Durham! I'm just yeah. <laughs> Another, uh... Have a nice day. <laughs> Did you say that? Did you actually say that? No! Yes, yes. <laughs> but but I give him I give him, I give him a joking wink. Like he sees that and he's like, you know what? I will. <laughs> he starts to play a tune which you put, you've never heard this song. It's uh, uh, clearly you know a regional thing. But he plays a tune that you assume is Hills of Durham until he starts singing and you realize he's making up lyrics on the spot about the drunk asshole he just got. <laughs> With, and as you're uh, making your way out, you hear him adding in lyrics about the, how the guy bangs everybody in his family. And... <laughs> <laughs> Almost lost it there, dude. I did. <laughs> I swallowed them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, know, you guys make your way up the stairs. I'm around to the opposite side of the building. You um, presume into the more upscale part of the inn. <laughs> I was like, I'm thirsty. I'm I, almost, thirsty. I, I almost brought a jug of tea. I'm doing intermittent fasting, so I'm not. I only, I only eat. I, get, I only get calories in my body for like an eight hour window. <laughs> and diet tea and water is all I can pretty much drink. That so. was. Sounds agonizing, and I don't want to do it. All right, so she brings you <laughs> to a large. Oh, it is agonizing. Ten pounds agonizing. so far. Ooh. So. Mm-hmm. She brings you to a large suite uh, on the corner of one of the buildings. Um, make your way in and. Um, make your way in the inn. What? Make your way in the inn. That's what she said. That is what she said. Into the suite. Okay. Okay. Um, Into the suite that's in the inn. But the suite that is in the inn. <laughs> yes. um, shortly after you arrive. Um, uh, yeah. The They're king the ones? appears oh, out of thin air in the center of the room. The king, um, the king just appears? Yeah. Just poof. poof. Did Gavin teleport him here? Oh. Gavin is actually... Well, actually, Gavin is nearby. Um, Gavin. Gavin went back to school, remember? <laughs> um, yeah. You, you assume a, a teleportation spell of some sort by Lorimer, most likely. Um, and he pulls immediately pulls out a uh, fairly large brown sack and pulls out a crystal... Um, waves his hand over it, and um, Alexandria appears outside of the, the crystal, and he puts it back in the bag. 
All right, good. You all made it safely. Uh, no problems, I hope. Nope. He kind of fixes his mane and uh, looks around. He's a little, it seems like he's a little bit nervous being in the city. Um, all right, well, um, Ethan, did you ask them about the ship? Yes, they said they could uh, have them docked by the end of the day. Excellent. Which I will call Dusk Chin on the box, box Casper right now. All right. Bless you, by the way. Um, don't bless her. There's no God. <laughs> what are you blessing her for? I didn't sneeze. Is that what that was? I thought that was Luna. That is Luna. That is Luna. Oh, okay. okay. I thought it was like a yeah. really squeaky <laughs> yeah. sneeze. Is that a sneeze, though? <laughs> no, it wasn't a sneeze. It was the cat. It was the cat. Doing what? Yeah, her cat. Because I mean, our cats sneeze sometimes. Oh no, she wasn't oh, sneezing. She was meowing at me. Just throw up, little fucker. We have a cat that like literally will throw up in a perfect circle. No. Shortly after, there is a tap at the door, and Sebastian um, is let into the room. Good morning. Um, I see we're all here. What is the first order of business? Yes, well, um, the ship is on the way. Um, I believe there was some preparation we needed to do within the city. Yes, I, uh, we were looking for somewhere to land the airship besides the docking bay, the docking tower. We pinpointed somewhere close to the quorum, but... Yes, you brought that up with me a few days ago. Um, I've had some agents investigating. Um, the area that you're wanting to park the ship, um, if done after dark, shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, let's see. There are about 25 homes in that block. Uh, 20 of them have a view of the courtyard where you're wanting to park the ship. Uh, twelve of these, uh, residents could easily be bought off to ignore the ship, uh, from what we've done, study on them. Um, there are three who may probably report you simply for asking them to look the other way, so we may need to look into another way of distracting them or having them elsewhere <coughs> when the ship is going to be there. Fire. Male or female? What's that? Fire. Um, a mix Fire of would both. probably... De- Fire would probably. Yeah, you don't want to know what's going else. on through my head, sir. Uh, the remaining five, they may not even be attentive enough to even see the ship, um, as far as whether they are viable or if we should use the same method to get them away. Um, that is unclear. I will leave that to you. But uh, my agents are at your disposal to execute whatever plan you wish to. Sebastian, do you have any do you have any ideas of what might drive them? Out of Hi, Groot. Hi, Groot. <laughs> Twitch ban. Um, DMCA strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could bet. I would put this on YouTube, and it's like, oh, we got a copyrighted song, so we're going to be sending all of the money for this video to Disney. Um, <laughs> so sorry for that. It's okay. It'll be edited out loud. It's fine. It will be edited in post. Don't worry about it. It's probably going to be so subtle that they wouldn't even pick up on it anyway. Wait, what? Huh? Huh? Matt's not live streaming. He's recording. Yeah, I know. So yeah. it's going to go on YouTube, and YouTube automatically detects copyrighted material. And if they detect it, they they send any ad revenue from your video to the copyright owner of whatever you stole. Yeah, but what if we? Steel. I, I am Groot. Groot. I am Groot. Oh. <laughs> that was a while ago. That was just now. No, no that just happened, happened now. now. My, my brother my just brother texted, texted me, me so. so. so uh, we're joking that YouTube algorithm is going to pick, uh, pick up I am Groot and be like, oh, this video is stealing content from Disney. Yeah, they're that no, fucking it's, it's three hours ridiculous. long, but that one, uh, one second <laughs> means my, everything, all my original content doesn't matter. Disney gets my money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You go Disney. <laughs> Disney nuts. Um, okay, so you uh, for driving them away from the home, I suppose we could 
I mean, we could arrange a fake infestation of some sort. That um, was what I, that was what I was thinking. If we could get get some, we could get them tickets to a a long show on the other side of town. Uh, say they want some sort of contest. There's all kinds of ways we could. Let's go with infestation. Would that they, sounds fun. Would they? Would they? Would they notice it after we already parked, or would just the, the parking be what draws their attention? Well, coming in um, after da- is a fairly dark part of town. You could probably park it without it specifically being seen coming in. The problem is sitting in the courtyard. Hold on, what is what are the moons doing that night? Could we come up with some? Well, oh, shit. Later discussion, but we could come up with a cloaking device for mm. the ship. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, there's one moon that is almost entirely entirely full that night. Several that are over half full. Hmm. So there's gonna be a decent so, amount of light. Yep. Can Loki. I put the invisibility Loki. around? I was gonna say, is there, is, there, <laughs> is, there, is, is, there, is there like a little uh, antenna he can put the ring on? <laughs> but there's a totally <laughs> chance of the, some of these people looking out the back window. As, luckily, the majority of them, I think we can, I think we can buy off. The five that we cannot buy off. Infestation. I would say we need. Well, there's five that, that we're not 100 percent sure what the personality indicates. Um, there are three that would almost guaranteed if we tried to buy them off, they would probably report us just for that. So, total of eight people that are... So we would need them to be gone Bless you? probably the majority of the night and the morning. No, that was That's insane. Insane. That is correct. Again, it's a big city. Most people do not have easy means of transportation, so if you give them some reason to be somewhere on the other side of town, they would have to stay in the inn on that side and would not be there that night. Or we just, or I just sneak in and shoot them all with tranquilizer darts, <laughs> which would cover eight hours. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just uh, tie them off? No, no. Giggity. Is there, is there a big show on the other side of town that we could get them tickets for? Oh yes, there's a a great theater district um, has shows running. Every day of the can week. I borrow, can I borrow the mask of many faces? Yes, you may. I take it off. Let's buy some. Let's get some tickets and um, and let's let's get some some rooms at the inn for him too. All right. So all expenses paid. All right. I'm gonna and I'll I'll actually deliver that. Personally. All right. We'll let them know it is uh, a new show. Um, we're you know trying to get some people in for word of mouth advertisements. I'm gonna put the mask on. I'm Ed McMahon, and you've won Publishers Clearinghouse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, isn't that, isn't that one of those Mandela effect things? That I think you, so. You, yeah. um, all right, so uh, so we're looking at about I give you the max back. I'm not really gonna do it. It was just a joke. It was a bit, but no, uh, I, was <laughs> I like that. Talking about average of uh, you know coming up to 16 people. Uh, Let's see, what would a theatrical production cost in the medieval era? Silver. I mean, it depends on what seats they're getting. Okay, we're assuming we're giving them halfway decent seats, so it actually comes off as a promotion. Yeah, like like, like orchestra, you know, lo- lower orchestra. All right. Not front row, but, you know, bottom floor orchestra. All right, I need a calculator. I went. I went and saw. I went and saw waitress in the front row. It was phenomenal. Nice. Just saying. I wasn't right, sure so what 16, came up about um, Playhouse Square this year. There was a lot. I watched. I went. I went. I saw Wicked last December. I think we did. And then I saw. And I saw waitress in April or May or June. I think. I haven't been paid attention. It's one of those things where. My financial shit is very so, tight right now, so I haven't bothered to take a look anymore. There really hasn't been anything that really like caught my attention to go see this the, the, the last half of the year. Mm-hmm. Hamilton, kind of, but what's that about? Hamilton, you can watch on Disney Plus. Yes, but it's not the same as watching it live. I know, I know. True. Okay, so uh, so eighty bucks sounds fair, right? Yeah. So that's I'm just saying if you can't go see it. see it. That's not bad. Um, so for the show tickets, we're talking 128 silver. And so, then a tavern stay, for so which would be six rooms? or 
No, sorry, eight rooms. Excuse uh, me. Because assuming these are, are uh, like one couple per household. Yeah. Uh, where is. Where's my cost shoot? Tavern stay. Are you getting halfway decent rooms or shit rooms? <laughs> halfway Good decent call. room. Comfortable. So eight silver pieces per room. Yeah, I say comfortable. We said call it two gold. <laughs> 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 or you know, eight silver pieces. That would be that would have to be that would go faster than than, than two gold. Yeah. No, I thought ten silver was one gold. Yeah, yeah. ten silver is one. Yeah, gold. so eight times eight is sixty-four. So yeah. that'd be so that'd like be seven. six point four gold plus the one point two gold for the one hundred ninety-two silver. Are you gonna pay for a carriage or something to get them out? There. No. No, they just gotta figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Travel yep. not included. So 190, <laughs> 192. All expenses paid, travel not included. Come on. Book your own fucking airfare. Basically, American <laughs> Idol. No, actually, can we just give him a ride in the air? That would be risky as shit. <laughs> 192 silver, what is that in gold? 20 gold? Yeah. Yeah. Move the 19.6 gold. Okay, so it's called 20. 20 gold? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so that's what it's going to cost you to pull off this. Okay, okay. How, about, how much for the bribes? Uh, what are you thinking on offering? What type of. Are they rich people? Are they, are they poor? Or are they poor? They're not poor. Maybe like lower average. Middle class? Um, like lower middle class. Lower middle class, so, so like lower than literally us. 10 gold? Wait, no. First of all, let's change the way let's change let's change the way we're framing class in this country here. Really, there's the bourgeois <laughs> and the wealthy elite, <laughs> and then there's the working class. They really should not be considered a working class. Or a middle class. They're all they all get fucked over by the by the wealthy <laughs> elite. So. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, like, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not destitute, they work for a living, or at least one person per household does, um, and, you know, they have a roof over their head. So, like, 15? No? More? No. You, you, guys, you guys don't understand how much gold lasts people. No, because we're rich. This is essentially $100. Oh. Yes. So like two or three gold pieces. Yes. So uh, that was fifteen. Twenty have a view of the green. But if you give them more, they twelve can be easily bought right? off. Yeah. So What's that? If you give them more, they might help. How would they help us? I don't. I don't know. Fucking clean the courtyard before we land in it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wash the ship while you, while it's waiting. We wash the ship. <laughs> you you, you, you have one we, we, we have we have this door. <laughs> Help you poison we the have, arrows. <laughs> we, have, we have this door. We need you to go into and clean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, twelve people bought off. You want to do how many gold per person? Three, five. Yeah, five. We'll call five. 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 All right, so that's 60 gold as well for them. Sebastian recommends uh, dealing with that portion of it closer to the night of, so there's not a lot of time for them to think, what did I just get blown off to do? Should I tell somebody? That kind of thing. Um, let them just, you know, enjoy the immediate gratification of a lot of money, and when they start having second thoughts, you guys are already gone. So you pass on the money for the agents to Hi, Luna. take if, care of if them. We more, Hi, if we had more sleeping potion, we could have just like dropped off a bottle of wine in each one of these houses the night. <laughs> so do you do you in fact um, go and personally deliver these tickets? No, it was just a bit. Yes. <laughs> How would you like that to be done? My baby. My baby. Some night shifters, I'm sure I Sebastian that. has the people. Yeah, that 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 too. Yes. People who could go, but they're also she's all sweet. shady as fuck looking. So, well, I, mean, I don't look very she's kind of elegant either. Cat. No, but I mean, like, they, they exude the these people are up to no good thing when they're directly interacting pe with people. I'm sorry. I mean, I guess well, you, can, you can speak up when I forget to put the uh, the stuff back on the screen. Hi, Luna. <laughs> well, she can't even see it. Hi, Luna's right butt. Now. <laughs> 
Uh, it's a it's a Luna eclipse. Yep, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. It really is. I just came up with a wacky idea. I, I hate like, idea. breaking the screen here, but you did just make friends with a bard. True. He probably <laughs> has a few other bard friends who could act like do the entire Andy from the Office thing, where they go around and play a, a bit from the show. And true, oh, we true. could just, we could work it out. Yeah. Attend the tale of Sweeney's Todd. <laughs> so go ahead and do a persuasion roll, and I'm going to give you a plus two bonus on top of whatever your stats are, since you uh, oh, man, I think I he considers you a uh, cool guy for what you did. Uh, let me bring up my D&D Beyond. Let me bring up my D&D Beyond. You said that was a persuasion? Bad mm-hmm. kitty, stop it. I know you can hear it. Ooh, I rolled a 19. Nice. Plus nice. four, 23. Nice. I'll do that shit for nice. free. <laughs> well, yes, I, I think I have some friends who might be able to help out. This sounds fun. I don't know what you're doing this for, but you know what? I don't have any questions. Well, I'm uh, just a patron of the arts, and I want some more people to go see this show. All right, not going to get any arguments from me. Um, so tickets have, uh, will already be purchased and all of that. Yeah. All right, um, so I'll give you time to make those arrangements, and I'll meet you here tomorrow uh, around this time, and yeah. uh, we'll get that set up. All right, fantastic. Good doing business with you. And he's, he is nursing a very expensive-looking drink in one of the nicer portions of the tavern. Um, it's clear that he is... Well off. No, well, see, he's nursing it because, like, unfortunately, the tips he is getting, it was getting in that portion of the tavern was not very good. Uh, you get the impression that he was expecting much, a much more glamorous lifestyle when he became a bard. Uh, but things are not going well for him so far. Can you come with us, please? <laughs> don't live a lavish lifestyle with us. Do we have room on the ship? I don't know. I don't want a bard. I do. <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're fun. <laughs> You don't, want, you don't want like like white noise when you're trying to go sleep. You know, right. just have the. <laughs> I don't need that. So no. just like no. Absolute silence. <laughs> Darkness. <laughs> Angry with me. Smile. You. We're gonna come up with a name for this guy. I did not expect him to be such an important. Dandelion. <laughs> oh, we can't. Damn it. Uh, you know, I want to turn this <laughs> campaign into books, and the more you guys throw in pop culture reference from other things, the harder it gets. <laughs> Tom Marilyn? Uh, he is half elf, so we will. Let's see. Half elf. There's a lot of characters we've come across that just are now part of. Yes. The story that Matt was like, fuck. We got, we got <laughs> fucking Kaylee back on the ship. Yep. Right. That was Eric Spock. <laughs> uh, his name is Heron. Herring? H-A-R-O-N. Herring? H-A-R-O-N. Herring? Herring. Herring. Okay. I was going to say herring. Like the Red fish? Uh, so, you have a new friend. He said name is not as bad as He'll cat. be part of the... <laughs> <laughs> Avengers Endgame <laughs> montage at the end. Yeah. Um, Fucking Gavin. <laughs> along with Gavin. Um, anyway, so uh, you marked off all the gold you're spending on all this shit? I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was like, I was like 120 gold so far. That's not that bad. I spent the 300 how for mu- the how much? How much was, uh, how much was the, the, the bards going to charge? The what? The bards? How much were they charging? Do oh, he's doing that. That is a failure. Oh shit! Um, just like he just said, you, you'll what get about the, his friends? Get the tit. He, they're <laughs> friends. They enjoy performing. Their, you know, I sold the, between this, the two hundred gold I spent on the dart gun, and the three hundred I stole from somebody when I first came in here, I've only spent twenty gold. That's not uh, <laughs> well, I spent three hundred on all the. Um, so, are are you going across town to to go buy the tickets and all yeah, that crap? Yeah, all right. Fantastic. So, are all of us going, or is it just Malcolm? No, yeah, Malcolm could just go. Guys? Is there anything else we can 
should be doing. She should probably stay in as much as possible. Yes. Yeah, I do need to stay in. <laughs> all right, so all of uh, Ethan, make sure you all know where your rooms are, uh, which are being covered. Um, you may make... each. Hmm? Or some people sharing rooms. Stop that! <laughs> <laughs> you each have an individual room if you guys want to double up for any there, there's, there's a door on the wall in between each room. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of town. Replace it with the whistle. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> And put the little head on the door. <laughs> and Can you it? imagine actually dropping that crystal in this place? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It'd be like one of those haunted mansions where you just like, you go into one room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cece, you put up with way too much without opening your mouth, I swear. Uh, that's <laughs> I keep looking over. Why can't. Oh, why has she said anything? Um, <laughs> I, I can still see her, so. Um, you have you saw what I had to put up with the other day. So. Um, so Malcolm, you make your way across town. How are you? I mean, that, that, can we I'll go with talk about the fact do, that, do, that do, do they have any kind of like carriage or yeah, there's order or something? There's uh, carriages across town. I want to ride a palanquin. I'll, I'll go with <laughs> Malcolm, but I'm gonna look for knickknacks too. Nice. Mickey Maybe, Nose. yeah. Some Funko Pops sitting around? Yeah. <laughs> I see Malcolm if just wants anything Malcolm. interesting. Malcolm just Malcolm wants just Mira wants and Echo to come up to see Malcolm. if Mira will or if we find another store <laughs> similar to allies. I mean, I, 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 do, I don't want Mira to go out with freckles to draw attention or her hair. Okay, hair fine. Shit. Okay, uh, I always choose a different look, though, too. If you guys, if you guys want to stay in, that's up to you. I'm just saying. No, I want to explore. Maybe Dude. there's a store like Alhai's. Are there allies over here? Are you gonna find some random ass museum somewhere to turn start turning stuff? <laughs> sure, but on, the, on this <laughs> t- the problem is on on this side of the country it has a completely different name because it makes a complete sense to have two different brands just because it's a different side of the country. Maybe they'd have different things <laughs> like rallies and rallies and uh, checkers or yeah, right. Uh, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Oh yeah. Did you know Hyman's uh, mayonnaise has a different name in, in different parts? I'm sorry. Did you? What did you just say? Hyman's or whatever. Hyman's. Hyman's. Hyman is something <laughs> much different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was. Uh... Is it Hellman's? <laughs> Hellman's. Hellman's. Is it Hellman's? He's like, Hi, Hellman. Hyman's is the store. Hyman's. Hyman's. Hellman's is the name. Is it? I was Hyman. like, I mixed the two together. That's what happened. Yeah, Hyman's has a great deflower. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deforest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember what I was looking for now. <laughs> I'm not bringing it up now. What? The Christmas one? <laughs> Never mind. Don't worry about it. Well, while you're looking, I, got, <laughs> I, I just laughed so hard I got to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That was me the other day, folks. <laughs> Cece had me laughing so hard. It's not my fault. Skyrim, Skyrim sounds like not on a horse. horse. <laughs> That's okay. I shut off the mod today. Can I just go and take the breath that I can hear your voice in my head? Jesus, here we go. Did it stop the horse the horse? Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh. All that to find out is one copper piece. <laughs> what is? A cab across town. Oh. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you could have just made something up. Yeah, well I knew that there was an official like thing, so I'm like might as well just look it up. Yeah, a cab across town is a copper piece, so both ways would be two. <laughs> Might as well make a gold piece the cab driver can go to the tire. I 
I'm, I'm just surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, uh, I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised Diddy couldn't, couldn't hear, hear what you were hearing. <laughs> <laughs> hear I'm surprised it. too, but you heard the other stuff. Um, <laughs> so it's a couple of pieces to take a cab across town, apparently. So well, that's two it. copper pieces total. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Malcolm, you make. Let's go ahead and switch back to the city, I guess. Crap! I got to switch back to. Um, you went with him just to explore. Yeah. All right. Um, to look for hymens. <laughs> <laughs> um, Giant speaker. Instead of alhys, it's just owls. Uh, that, that Giant Smeagol. <laughs> Is that a grocery store here? Giant Smeagol? <laughs> it's precious. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Um, so... No taters. <laughs> <laughs> um, you make your way across town in the cab. At some point, yeah. not huh? Oh, <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> so you make your way across town in the cab, and some point, not too far away from the inn, uh, before you get to that side to make all the arrangements. Um. You suddenly start to feel a little bit ill. Me? No. no. Am I um, noticing you, this? Is, is Reaper's hand holstered? Yes. Okay. Um, just, I didn't know if you made, let, made it like not be around until you needed it, or if you went ahead and holstered it just so you had it. Um, you notice the you, you, the... you have a slight ill feeling... And you have tunnel, like this tunnel vision. Your attention focuses briefly on this woman that is passing the cab the other direction. Um, you get the impression she lives in the area, and you notice the barrel of uh, Reaper's hand glows green briefly as you pass her. Glows green? Mm-hmm. What does it tell you? I can't remember what the green means. Lying. Lying. Someone's lying. Well, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I use the right color then. I don't know if you put that on the on the description of it, but I'm pretty sure green means lying. Inventory. You don't have it in the weapon discussion. The description itself. I think you wrote it down. Right? Yes, sorry, green is lying. Um, glowing hand of the following devil red, fiend orange, undead blue, moon eyed green if they're lying. What color did it glow when you pointed it at? Blue? Uh, what's his name? Clisbeer. Um, I thought it would glow. I thought it glowed blue. It glowed blue. And the bells told in my ear. Yeah. Is blue not a color on there? It, it, well, it says undead blue. The green for mine. What color is left? <laughs> There's one purple. Item. You sure? I don't know. Just making up colors now. Ah. I'm in. Which would be white. Or red. Wait, really? Pink. 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 Red, orange, blue, green. There was another color, and I told you I can't tell you what it means yet. Until today, and you forgot what color it was? You didn't write it down, did you? Where else would I have it? would have had a description? I can't I can't deal with this mediocrity in, in Dungeon Mastering. Dungeon Mastering? Yeah, I know. How dare you? <laughs> So I didn't put it in the special description for the weapon? 
I did not see it in the in the description. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess for the time being, let's pick a color. What color it would stand out from red, orange, blue, green? Are those the ones that we don't haven't used? Red is for devils. Fiend is for or uh, fiends are orange. Undead is blue. Green is lion. I need a, a color that is not in that list. Yellow. White. Purple. 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 You want to go with purple? Yeah. All right. I like it. Mason That's do purple. Too. That's canon now. All right. So you notice mm. the barrel of. Um, Reaper's hand glows purple like it did when you aimed it at uh, Klysman. So I see a glow purple and I'm like I shake my head. Are they like just walking or? Yeah, she uh, is carrying a basket. Uh, looks to be a uh, some various fruits and vegetables she just bought at the market. That's why you get the impression she probably lives in the area. She's on foot and carrying groceries, essentially. Are you going to stop? What is going purple? Is that the one we don't know? Yeah. Oh, shit. Stalker. I look over at you, Zuko. I'm like, can you handle buying these tickets and everything? I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I, there's something I need to take care of. Okay. I jump off. Alright. Uh, you jump out of the carriage. Um, Zuko continues on to take care of your errand. So, so you're going to discreetly follow her? I'm actually going to... Is the, Does the basket look heavy? Not particularly. I mean a little on... It's, she's... Probably gathered everything she can at this point with um what, That'd be suspicious. Or, just walking up and be like, hey, let me take that for you. That'd be suspicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll follow at a healthy distance. Okay. <clears throat> so sure enough, it only takes a few minutes for her to round a corner. Um she lives in a kind of low end uh part of the town. Um a building that is fairly small and cramped in between a bunch of other ones. Um she seems to uh, everybody in town in the area seems to know her. Um, she, you know, greeting a lot of people and you know making small talk as, as she walks. Well, I'm a uh, big train to Bell scene. What does she look like in Beauty and the Beast? Cup uh, size. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Cup size. B minus. <laughs> Dang. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, fairly average, uh, nondescript woman. Um, only thing that stands out about her is in spite of, she, like I said, she's on the lower end of, of the, um, uh, financial spectrum. She seems very cheery, um, the kind of person who, no matter what's happening to them, they keep a positive attitude and... Oh, so you, basically. Better than, uh, added than me. <laughs> One of those people who's annoyingly optimistic. <laughs> oh. Um, Ted Lasso. <laughs> Apple Plus. Gets her arm cut off. Oh, that was inconvenient. <laughs> um, but very nondescript. Uh, you know, average brown hair, brown eyes. Um, average height. Um, Just average. Mid thirties, probably. Would well, Malcolm? Would Malcolm get the sense that she's suspiciously average? <laughs> no, um, like she's just, trying to hide something. Nope, just herself? naturally nondescript. Jo, you just get the impression she's one of those people. There's nothing special about her. But something special about her. Goddamn it! But something <laughs> is making you feel uncomfortable in her vicinity. Um, and the closer you get, the more that you notice that purple glow. A relative. Oh, we're probably not a relative. I don't think a relative would make me feel ill, would, would they? Someone who's close to death? Mm -hmm. No, because the close to death was the blue eye, or the Klysmere yeah, color, undead right? Was yeah, undead blue, was blue, right? right? Klysmere was purple as well. Okay, so she's 
Well, you you oh. didn't. Uh, you're not 100% certain what that meant when you aimed at him and it, and it did that. But the gun was somehow acknowledging him. That's all you really understood. It was somehow it was acknowledging him specifically. Because you could aim that gun at anybody else, and you know if there's nothing special about him, usually it wouldn't do anything. I mean, you could still fire it, but their purple means something. Like there's some connection between that person and the gun. But you're not sure what it means yet. Um, and the more, like, the, when you occasionally close the gap, you notice kind of the color goes out of the world. And she's the only colored thing in your vision. Um, and when you hit that point, it start, it kind of makes you feel Ooh. uneasy. Ooh. Like, I'm married. Can't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> So as she's going past, I would maybe like talk to one of the people that like acknowledge her that, that this seems like they know her, mm -hmm. and just like strike up a conversation and see if I can't delve any information about her from anybody. Okay, what kind of information are you going? Are you kind of trying to pull out? Her name, first of all, I guess. Okay. Um. That's easy. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, can easily, non-suspiciously ask, hey, who is that? Um, and you know what? Just because you said it, I don't know why you said it, but I'm going to... She's going to be Belle. You said that everybody was being friendly to her, so my brain went, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way the scene went. So, yeah, <laughs> so her name's Belle. Bonjour, hello, it's nice to meet you. Uh, what else are you going to try to get out of him? How is your wife? <laughs> What's that? Well, what else are you going to try to get out of him? Uh, has she... Has she lived around here long, or...? Oh, yes, she's, uh... Even since she was a child, actually. She's been in this neighborhood. Uh, but most of her think of her as a wonderful mother and housekeeper. Uh, three lovely children. Couldn't ask for better. Especially, you know, most kids in... Uh, on our uh, our side of town tend to get into trouble pretty early on in their years, but hers are all well behaved. Uh, they don't have a lot, but she seems to keep uh, everything under control. Three kids and she, she, her husband? Oh yes, her husband works very hard. Um, I was very worried for him. Recently she fell very ill and uh, I was worried he was going to be left with all of it. I don't think he could hold the house together on his own. But uh, she made a miraculous recovery, and uh, everyone in town's very happy that she's back to her old self. She was supposed to die. She was supposed to die. She was supposed to die. Like um, but Harry Potter, made... though. But she's not. She cheated death. It's a thing. <laughs> Harry Potter death. Maybe the death. The spell. The Deathly Hollows. The the thing, the stone or something. Yeah. Resurrection stone. There it is. The oh, elder wand there and the go. cloak of invisibility. I haven't <laughs> seen Deathly <laughs> Hollows yet. It's, 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 it's been. It's Spoiler been. alert. <laughs> okay, it's been ten years. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm currently oh, watching. Oh, them. Snake killed Dumbledore. Uh, Half Blood Prince. <laughs> okay. Michael, everybody in the oh, room died. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> forget. I forget. I just said what I just spoiler, said. That. <laughs> I did just ruin Half Blood Prince. <laughs> Um, don't watch the don't watch this. <laughs> don't watch this back. But yeah, she's, uh, she's everybody. Uh, she's uh, all back to normal, and we're all very happy for it. So she, everybody thought she was going to die, and she didn't. That's incredible. Oh well, I think most of us tried to avoid that thought. But as sick as she was, I suppose it wouldn't have been surprising. Like I said, her husband's a very hard worker, nice man, but I'm not sure how he would handle things if uh, she had you gonna ask him left him alone him? with those three kids and what his name is, where he works. No, what's what's his name? It's a beast. <laughs> Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. Gold. 
What is his actual Cannon, name? Cannon, Belle Gold, thing? that's her name. Belle Gold, it's the Gold family. All right. Um, Mr. Gold from Once Upon a Time? I need to shut up. That's what she, <laughs> yeah, that's what she was <laughs> referencing, yeah. So she's Belle Gold. Um, Does that make his name? So you asked about the husband's name, too? I know, yeah. right? Okay, roll <laughs> a persuasion <laughs> check to keep... Rumpel Stiltskin? Huh? Rumpel Stiltskin? Roll a persuasion check to try to keep from raising suspicion about the you to ask Ooh. a lot of questions. Nice. That is a 19. 19. You get a little bit of a... Um, yes, uh, her husband's David. Um, oh, that's, oh, oh, that is oh, weird. Oh, that is oh, weird. Oh, 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 I thought maybe he owned a pawn shop. So what? I thought maybe he owned a pawn shop. He'd be much well wealthier than the <laughs> <guy. laughs> I don't know why. Huh? Immediately I thought Belle and like David, and, like, David a.k.a. Charming. Charming. Fucking forever. Yeah. Rumble still skin owned the pawn shop in town. And he was dating Belle. His name was Mr. Gold. Oh. Have you seen once upon a time? He's, he's said his brother wild. Just, just, be, oh, just because he was a pawn shop doesn't mean he's wealthy, because the best they can do is 300. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, he works down at one of the, uh, the fisheries. Like I said, not a lot of money, but they all manage to keep the household together, keep the kids in line. Well, thank you very much for your for your time. I just, uh, every now and then, just some, somebody just walks past you and intrigues you, you know? Oh, yes, yes, I, th I think I understand what you mean. Yeah. Well, she's a very friendly person. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm sure she'd be glad to meet someone new. Are you uh, Are you new in town? Uh, yeah, I'm just visiting for a few days, uh, just walking around and, you know. Okay. Yes, yeah, you have girl. a nice day, sir. You too. <laughs> so, do I get the sense, or will it, do, do I feel like it would make me very uncomfortable to be near her like five feet away from her the only way to find out would be to get up super close oh let's fucking do it fuck around and find <laughs> out all right so you try to discreetly without you know making her feel like somebody's like about to pounce on top of her um get up very close and as you do your vision cuts out almost completely for a moment and you get flashes of images <clears throat> of her getting sick of her bedridden, of uh, David, you presume, um, speaking with the you know local uh, physician, the apothecary, um, all of them telling them they don't know what it is, they don't know how to help her, um, and uh, you get visions of him going to a very shady shop in a very rundown part of town. Um, and making a deal with a very shady looking character for an artifact of some sort um and then him uh bringing it back to the house finding out that she has passed but using the artifact and she suddenly makes a miraculous recovery it seems feels very strange she um you get flashes of her talking about things she had seen that had made her think that she had passed on to the other side um, dismissing it as it must have been a fever dream because um, he assures her you know you you were still with us the whole time oh Does shit get a clear look at the artifact it just looks like a green glowing rock as far as you can tell from the visions but it lo looks to have lost its energy when it was used on her um Uh, you also get the vision of somebody else, somebody you don't recognize. You get you get the impression by the surroundings they were in town as well. So they fall dead. Oh crap! Oh crap! It sounds familiar. See, see, are you thinking supernatural for a good minute here? Yeah. 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 I'm gonna kill this bitch. You're gonna kill her. Oh my god! <laughs> She's too happy though. She cheated death. He's gonna gank her. We cheat death all the time. We do. We don't cheat death. Well, we survive. There's we survive. a difference. Okay. The impression you get from the vision by the time it's over that she 
passed from whatever this illness was, and her was husband used back. an artifact that traded her life for somebody else's. Ironic, yeah, but it, yeah, but it, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't know. know. He didn't, didn't tell her. her. That's like correct. She, she you get the impression that she has no idea what happened. She did well. She did for a moment feel like she had passed on, but she at this point thinks it was a fever dream. But one way or the other, she is living a life that she that is not. Yeah, she she has lived past what the universe intended for her. Unfortunately. Are you just gonna shoot her in the middle of the crowd? Get a little bit more discreet than that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Malcolm's all about shooting first, asking questions later. He really so is. Although the Reaper's hand, if I don't use any ammo, does it make a sound? Oh it does not actually. I mean, it makes a sound, but not like a gunshot because there are no powder, there's nothing else. It's simply firing, firing necrotic energy. But do you want to do this with her not knowing what happened, or do you I want to no, give her closure? I'm going to give her closure. I'm going to follow her until she... I'm going to fall back and follow her again at a safe distance until she gets to wherever she's going. Hopefully her kids aren't fucking home. Matthew, if you do this to me... <laughs> <laughs> Come with me in this dark alley. <laughs> All right, so you uh, you do follow, continue following her. Um, since you've seen the visions, it's a bit a little bit easier on you being in her proximity. Um, since you've worked out what's going on, you feel more at ease with the sensation. Um, and uh, so you do find she find uh, her home. Um, she carries everything in um, and uh, what do you do from there so she carries everything in I'm going to sneak in quietly sneak in sneak in yeah without her knowing I'm sure it's a large house, or semi-large house, since she has three kids. There's got to be a window or a door or something I can get into easily. You could okay, roll an investigation check to find the, the best way to get in without anybody noticing. Well, good today. Um, what is my intelligence? Are you holding the gun, or are you leaving it in the holster at the moment? I mean... Uh, I'm, I'm going to pull it out once I get in. I'm not going to... Okay, so you're not going in with it out. Okay, no. That changes. What? That changes certain things, so... You have this whole thing planned out already, don't you? Should I have the gun out? Sure. I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and have the gun out already. Um, investigation, you said... So, 16. 16. Okay, so you find a... Uh, you know, window that is not facing the street um, you're able to get to it without anybody really noticing you pull out the uh, reaper's hand which is now going bright purple um, but as you try to climb through the window you find that there's nothing to touch your hand simply goes through what so I just try to walk through the wall then you are able to walk through the wall it's the gun. <laughs> so now you know when the gun has detected somebody that is past their time, it gives you some extra abilities to deal with said situation. You also notice that, um, like looking down at your arm, um, you're kind of translucent. Um, so it, you get the impression it's possible even if there was people around, they wouldn't have noticed you. Oh shit. That's cool. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um So I would do, do I sense anybody but her in the house right now? Uh not at the moment. Get, it's fairly quiet in there. It's just her. So I will um I will come to her. Just 
I whisper, Bell. Before you even get the chance to open your mouth, as you enter the room that she is in, it's like she senses you. You make no, your, your, your footsteps are making absolutely no noise. Um, you are come silent um, as a whisper. And somehow when you enter the room, it's like she, she suddenly tenses up a little bit and she slowly turns in your direction. And the smile, the cheeriness, all of that kind of drips away a little bit. Like she said, somehow she knows or has some sense of what this is about. I don't think she sees me. Am I? Do I? Do I get the sense where I can make her be able to see me? No, she does. See, she turns oh, around. She, and she oh, looks she directly. She, at does, she, see me? she okay. does see. She does see. Okay. It's past your time, though. Understand what you mean. Who died? Are you saying I've I've been a ghost this entire time? You've not been a ghost. You've been something unholy and unnatural. I haven't felt any different. I remember when I got sick. I felt I saw things that. You died and another life was taken to give yours back. She kind of grins and she sits down exasperated. David. Damn it. <clears throat> I didn't know. I doubt David did either. He must not have known what the price was. I suppose he would have paid any man's been hopeless without me since we met. So I have to go, don't I? You do. Can I, I, I just need a moment to process this. Take a few moments. What will happen to my thing? You have three kids? Yes. Your there. husband David? Yeah. He should be coming back from work fairly soon. Just so he's not wondering what happened, just let him know. Write, write, write a note and let him know that uh, the price must be paid. He won't be punished for this. He. Good. But I will also leave something for your family. More than I ever could have hoped for. Thank you. I guess gold part is, of me did know. Gold is meaningless to. Gold doesn't mean much to me. I have to. But death, you can't cheat it. I, 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 I. There's nothing I can do. I understand. Still feel so young, but. I suppose everyone has their time. It's not always when you expect it to be. <clears throat> it never is. Well, <clears throat> she sits down and writes the letter, folds it up. Should I just have this on me? Yeah. There won't be a mess, will there? No. All right. <clears throat> Here or wherever you... Well, <clears throat> I imagine my uh, 
my husband will probably be the first to find me, but just in case, I'd like it to look like I just went to sleep. So, um, she goes to her bed and gets herself in a comfortable position, like as if she was going to sleep. Thank you f for being so kind about all this. I take the 300 gold coin purse I got earlier and leave it on her. Or put it in her hands along with the letter. Alright, I'm ready. And we shall for we shall flow over the fourth to the continuing soul shall it ever be. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you lift Reaper's hand towards her. Yeah. Um that purple glow grows uh, glows brighter and you hear that bell toll again. And I pull the trigger without any ammo in it, and it just does the necrotic damage to... Alright, so you pull the trigger. Hardly a sound comes from the gun as a bolt of black energy fires her in her direction, doing no physical damage. Um, and you simply watch as her life ceases to be. And the glow disappears from the gun. She is alive. She is alive. Alright. So. And I just quietly slip out and. Does it let him go through a wall on the way out? Probably not. You maintain that, that form of death incorporeal <laughs> until the task is completed and you leave the house. And uh, I assume you make your way back to the tavern. Yeah. All right. That music was so appropriate, though. <laughs> so, sorry for that downer, but... I couldn't bypass the chance of seeing what was going on with the gun. No, I understand <laughs> that. It's a little sad, but it needed to be done. There's going to be a lot of sad moments with me killing people for death. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them probably won't be, though. Some yes, fortunately, there's some people who cheated death who very much deserve to die. Yeah. But, oh, 100%. Um, occasionally, <laughs> you will run into people who uh, you wish you could let them have it, but <laughs> you are death. This is your job. Now. Yes, and I left them a of money, so they should be fine for right now. For a little while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any other business that needs... Oh. Sorry, okay, I want to try to move things along here for the sake of uh, brevity's sake. Um, uh, later that day, um, Serenity arrives. Um, the <sighs> king goes uh, incognito and walks with you to the ship, uh, has you fly out to... Um, a field outside of the view of the city. Um, and he walks out of the ship, you're st um, and he's like, I'm not sure exactly how this works, but we'll see what happens. He kind of holds his arm out. Um, all of The entire group is there. You guys, um, Sebastian, Alexandria, um, Ethan, um, and he holds his arm out and kind of focuses, closes his eyes, and there's a quaking of the ground um, that seems to be coming from a distance in front of you and arrives, you know, gets closer, and the ground begins to be upheaved as one after another in waves you see this army of statues, it seems, appear in this field. Massive army. Um, seemingly, uh, besides the fact that they came out of the ground, seemingly immobile. Um, as the last of the army coalesces, um, finally one at the front, they, they're all stone, but they look like they're wearing armor and weapons, um, and some of the armor is somewhat more intricate. Um, one of these more elaborate looking statues finally kind of gets into a more natural humanoid pose uh, and 
marches forward um, towards the king and kind of looks down on all of them are, have elven features uh, but are a bit on the tall side. And you get the impression that this is one of the commanders of the army, one of the higher ranked statues. Um, and he, so he, you know, stands at attention for the king. Um, the king looks a little bit uncomfortable with the situation, but is trying to sound authoritative and uh, comfortable with this all. He says, I have your first task. In, within two days' time, I need this army to discreetly surround the city uh, a few miles behind me. Uh, wait for our signal and have your army march towards the gates. But do not engage. If you are attacked, simply allow those attacks to come your way. I assume you will not, uh, not many of your soldiers will fall to any harm. I simply want a show of force, but do not harm anyone at this time. And the statue kind of gives this curt nod and uh, begins making arm and hand signals, um, and the army begins to divide up and march in separate directions, keeping their distance from the city. Um, but. Uh, you know, making their way to set up so that they are able to march in and have the city completely surrounded by the time the quorum uh, takes place. The king explains, uh, this is our diversion. With this army marching at the gates, I assume most of the city's forces will be spread out and away from the quorum, and any chances of uh, them calling for backup should be averted. And no one should be harmed because my... These uh, soldiers are completely under my control and won't attempt to defend their lives to and uh, harm anybody in the process. So, hopefully everyone approves of that. <clears throat> so, um, you uh, let the bard know that the arrangements have been made and his group goes around and does a little performance for all these people and offers them free tickets and, a and an in-stay. Um, the final evening, um, Sebastian pays off the, uh, ones that can be paid off. Um, you have Serenity fly into the courtyard and park itself there. Um, you spend one more night in the inn. Is there anything that, uh, any conversations, anything that needs to be brought up? I keep doing it. Well, <laughs> she keeps letting it happen. <laughs> Um, I give Zuko back the money for the tickets. Yep. So you don't have to worry about taking anybody out here. I'll just take it out of mine. Alright. May Maybe I ask what that yeah. was where you had to leave? This is a conversation with everybody in the party. I mean, I, I don't know if Nero's around, but me, I, you know, I was getting Zuko back the money and he asked me himself. Okay, so if... are we assuming this is one dinner or something like that? I, I guess, yeah. Okay. I look down and uh, I found somebody that I found somebody that had cheated death. On purpose? No. It wasn't their fault. But the price still has to be paid. And I ended up having to exact that price from her. her. Her life was forfeit from the beginning. You know, as the champion of death, I have to dole out that justice. I felt horrible because she left behind three children and her husband, who initially started the whole thing. But uh, I left them some money, and I hope that it will help them get on their feet to land softly. I think one way that would ease your conscience. Maybe we can help this family discreetly. Well, I already gave them 300 gold. That's enough to get... If they spend it right a yeah. few years. 
By the way, I assume you came back and like and like checked on the family from a distance or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, you know, she her husband is the one who discovered her. Um, as far as you understand, the um, the funeral will be later in, in the the day of the, uh, quorum. the quorum. I will probably stop by the funeral if I am able to. If we're not. Bit otherwise occupied. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, T- family's definitely taking it somewhat hard, but with uh, what you were given to the family, it appears that the father has been able to stay home and help the kids through all this, and uh, the neighbors are rallying together to help them out. Um, you know, emotionally at least, since you know everybody in that part of town is fairly poor. Um, she was well loved by her community. I think that they will rise up and help what little they can with him as well, whether it be helping with the kids or whatever they, whatever they might need. I hope so. Friends don't let friends bring their friends back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't regret that. <laughs> so. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Echo still play, keeping that vision close to the chest? Yep. Yep. All right. You just let me know when you want to. It's filled as fucking guts. <laughs> 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 All right. What's what, what what's Echo's mood right now? Does it, it, d- yeah. d- does it does it change her scent or anything? It's up to her. Are you feel still feeling about how you were? Or are you about back to equilibrium? What's equilibrium? We'll, we'll what's back to equilibrium. <laughs> equilibrium was a badass movie, is what that was. Uh, what it, uh, basically <laughs> mean like <laughs> no no emotion at the extreme level. Just normal, which is in which case she normal. will. Normal. Normal. In which case she will just appear more. I mean, like a normal elf. Um, and she'll just smell like what she smells like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's not taking changes the temperature of the room. Her skin color is normal. <clears throat> Wait, what did my, what skin, did my skin, color skin color change to? to? It is brightened. Um, yeah, oh, I think. Yeah. I th- yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I think the mood you were in would be spring. So I believe you would just have kind of a, a you know, glow. I'd have to, what would happen if I was Blue. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling blue. Um, <laughs> the same as when you were that when you had that vision and uh, you were scared and kind of. Um, uh, worried when you uh, you came onto the ship and it, uh, like your your skin kind of turned bluish, and it made the, in- the entire room go colder. Basically, your your extreme moods are represented by one of the four seasons. So it'll change your skin color slightly, temperature, your scent. <laughs> the scent of a woman. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was a little surprised by hearing, okay. hearing about okay. Fell, but other than that. Okay. Um, Alright, so if there is nothing else to address, we bring ourselves to um, mid morning, Quorum Day, on the 57th. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. All right. So you meet one last time in the suite. Yes. Um, Our mission, which whether we choose to accept it or not, (laughs) the scroll will self destruct. (laughs) It's it's about nine (laughs) a.m. I assume you probably adjusted your your watch to, to local time. If you are captured or killed, you will, we will not recognize your breath. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get rid of the sad music. Let's make sure you switch the screen back. Yeah. Once you finish changing the music, Matthew. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, you meet one last time in the suites. Um, 
the only one uh, left uh, in the room at this point is the king. Um, and he um, shows you the crystal that he pulled out of the bag before that seemed to contain Alexandria. Um, and he puts it in your hand. He's like, now I'm going to... This is similar to the device that we used to capture your undead dragon that you let loose at the prison. <laughs> um, however, this one has a mechanism within it that allows those within it to come out. However, it is very difficult to see or hear what is going on outside. All of it is a bit muffled and blurry. So, the only way I'm going to know that it is time to come out is when you pull it out of this bag. So, once I'm in there, also, there's a bit of a difficulty to understand how time is passing while you're there. So, make sure it does not come out of the bag until we are on the quorum floor. <clears throat> I, I pull out my crystal. I just kind of gently... You are full <laughs> <strong. laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> explain to him what it does as I'm just gently tossing it's it like <laughs> and you said that's fragile <laughs> but let him know that uh, Alhai uh, gave it to us to facilitate the Alhai wants a good word <laughs> oh, he we'll does. make sure that he's well taken care of but like you said make sure it, this does not come out of the bag because when it does I will assume this time so um, my life is quite literally in your hands. Uh, Peekaboo. <laughs> no! <laughs> so, out of character question. Yeah. Okay. I just It just occurred to me. This crystal makes a pocket dimension? In a sense, yes. So it's not like a bag of holding? No. Okay, good. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because your quiver... <laughs> yeah. If you go into... A pocket dimension. True. Uh, it, it's mm-hmm. essentially we all die. Pokeball. Okay. okay. <laughs> like a what? Like a Pokeball. Pokeball. No, no, no. My <laughs> crystal that we're going to use on the quorum floor to lock all the doors. Yeah. That creates a pocket dimension. It, it, it so turns it, the room. It's a, Essentially, it's a spell contained in a... Okay. I just want okay. to make sure that... Double check. I just want to yeah. make sure once I drop that crystal, his quiver is not going to fucking explode on me. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. Not in, in that... You'll buy me a new fucking quiver. <laughs> you'll, be, all you'll, you'll be Reese's Pieces, bro. <laughs> I think we all would. <laughs> um, no, it's essentially... It essentially casts a spell on the room is what it does. So. Gotcha. That's, <laughs> that's why you always make sure to leave your quiver outside of the wizard door if you go in there for storage. um yeah so um he touches the sphere that one percent he taps the sphere in your hand and you watch as he Uh, kind of gets sucked into it um and you put the sphere in the bag oh it just died no worries all right so everything is up to you at this point Screen. Switch the screen. The screen. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I think I'm ready. Are you guys ready to just go ahead and get this done and over with? Yeah. Tonight. Let's do this. Yeah. No, yeah. like the the quorum is going on right now. Yeah. We we we're, we go, we're going now. Not, not tonight. Okay. Now. Okay. Are you saying you want to end the session and do this at the beginning of the next one? How or? long is it going to take? It shouldn't take very long. All you have to do is accurately hit everyone. And Let's if you do want, it. if you want to save the conversations that go in the, on in the quorum for the beginning of next session, I'm fine with that. Too. Let's do that. Yep. All right. Cool. So that that means less I have to prepare because that means I just have to do the map for Emperor, and that should be the end of that session. So, all right. Um, you guys make your way over to the courtyard um, where Serenity is currently parked. Um, Make your way onto the ship. Everyone there is awake, ready, and um, just waiting on your orders to take off. Um, the ship lifts off without even closing the uh, the cargo doors, and f- makes its way quickly over towards the back end of the Quorum Hall. Find me leaving. Um, you find mm. yourself very quickly looking down at the. Um, dome of the quorum. The dome of the quorum building. Quorum building. Um, so, how are you pers- making your way in? 
Well, Zuko, Zuko is going to be able to just drop down and then Misty step. Misty step, right. So. Keep in mind that'll be loud. Would I be able to glide down with my wings? The Misty step. That is an option as well. I also I would also be able to do the Misty, misty step. step. Yeah, it's true. I guess I'm going to grab some fucking rope. Do you want my <laughs> magic rope? Or the, or the, the yeah. magic carpet. I wonder if I could... That's that's going to be too chancy. I'm not going to do that. Do what? I was just going to jump out and try to grappling hook. Oh my oh, god. Oh, anything? <laughs> it's probably not a bright idea. Um, I mean, I've got some healing potions. I'll take the grappling hook. If I put myself like a rope harness to like drop down, and then grappling hook will just take me out of the rope and just to the edge of whatever the grappling hook is hooked onto. Okay. Yeah. So, guess what, guys? I'm going first. <laughs> All right. How are you dealing with the windows? Are you just gonna fall through it, or are you breaking? Oh, oh we're making oh, an entrance. I'm, I'm, oh, we're, I'm, we're, I'm, we're making an entrance. I'm grabbing. I'm not grabbing the Reaper's hand. I'm grabbing my normal pistols, and I'm just going to shoot out some windows as I'm dropping down through. And as I fall through, I'm going to throw that crystal on the ground of, on the ground of the quarry as well. No, you want us to be in there too. No, you can get, you can enter, you can't exit. Yeah, we could go in, we oh, just okay. can't get out. Okay. All right. So, voluntarily, I, you don't have to roll for initiative because you're basically volunteering what order you're going. So, mouth is first. Here is tribute. Yep. Who's I'll going go after? Second. You're going second? I'll go third. I'll go fourth. I'll go fourth. It's not like there was another option. <laughs> I'll go fifth. I'll go fifth. <laughs> I'll let some of the guards go first, and then I'll go. All right, so you said you're blasting open the, the windows, so they're just going to hear loud bangs and shattering glass at first and have no idea what's going on? Yeah. Okay, I like this. All right, so Malcolm... Um, stands at the opening. There's a large cargo door in the center of the cargo bay that opens and goes straight down below the ship. Um, so uh, you look over the precipice uh, and just start opening fire rapidly on all of the windows at the top of this dome, um, which shatter in succession. Um, and so you're... Uh, Alright, so that takes three attacks, right? Yep. Um... Yeah, that should clear pretty much all of the glass at the top. Or gives you all multiple options of which point you want to drop in. Um, and then you're just, you just kind of like let yourself fall forward. Yeah, I'm hoping maybe like some of the crew will kind of kind of lower me down, but quickly. I, I don't know what... Do okay, so you're in a rope system? harness, right? Yeah. Um, so basically they can set it up with almost a counterweight system, so once you actually hit the end of the initial length, it'll slow your descent down. That's fine, yeah, because I just don't want it to like... <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be. It's just gonna. I mean, you're be free nice fall for a few crap. seconds, and yeah. then it'll slow your descent. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of a lurch, but like a parachute jump kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, so you free fall through the windows, and shortly after, you get a view of the overall layout of the room. Um, you feel it start to slow you down. Um, what do you do? Um, I will. So three attacks. I think I only have three attacks. If I action surge, can I throw the crystal and hook the grappling hook? To place to take place in two of the attacks I would normally get? You can drop the crystal easily with okay. it as a free action. Okay. Um, so you let the f crystal fall, free fall to the floor. Um, and then what you wanted to use the grappling hook as well as an action? Yeah. Okay. Um, yep, that should work. So what are you grappling on to? Oh, I guess I'll give a brief description of the room. So um, it is a... Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, which one is it? I don't know. It should have been that one. All right. So it is a circular room. Um, each of these outer circles you see are only halfway into the room. The back half is kind of outside of the central wall. There's um, a mirror. So basically where okay. this circle meets these circles, that's a wall. Um, 
and there's of course a cutout. There is a kind of outdoor amphitheater style seating in them with one main seat <laughs> at the front of each of them. Um, you can quickly make out the delegations. Uh, this is Arania. I was like, I keep falling. This is Arania. This is uh, this is Teresia. I'm gonna. I'm going to try to grapple onto Teresia's platform. No, Rumlin's. Okay, Rumlin is here. Yeah. Um, That's my hometown, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Teresia. Although I do like their toast. Casena. <laughs> Karchanok. Everybody got that? Yes. Uh, yes. What was the oh that that Kartanak? What was the other one? Kasena. Kasena. Yeah, Kartanak Kartanak is here. Yeah. yeah. Kartanak, Kasena, so Teresia. Kasena is the free marches north of Palhas. Um, Kartanak is the the one you've gone to twice now, uh, both for. Is Heim part of Kasenia? What's that? Is Heim part of part of Kasenia? No, it's in the in Iranian Empire. Okay. Uh, on the border with Rumlin, gotcha. which is why this meeting was called because Rumlin's starting to wonder why there's a bunch of fucking military right on his border. <laughs> um, Teresia is the one that's been taking advantage of the fact that the Empire let took all their soldiers out of um, Freelos Province and has been trying to take uh, territory. Ooh. And making some pure Teresian toast. And he's the one who can drop the secret that um, Paul Haas has their own army that the Empire doesn't know about. So, um, alright, so you're hooking on to Rumlin. Yeah. Yep. Alright, so... I'm gonna just... <laughs> yeah, easily, you hook on to the wall, um, which allows you to drop a safe distance from the top of the archway into the center of the delegates <laughs> of Rumlin. There is a member of the Titsero Legion standing there and is preparing to <laughs> defend his delegates. Um, so I, tip, that, I tip my head on them before I end my turn. <laughs> uh, that brings us to Zuko. So you're just uh, doing a fancy dive. Uh, oh, Assassin's Creed style. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, drop drop backwards and then flip over as you're falling. The, 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 <laughs> I, I was picturing him like the 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 dive to the haystack thing. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. My God, it's been a while since we played that. Um. All right. So as you free fall into the room, the the ceiling is I'm gonna say about 125, maybe 200 feet from the wow. floor. Um. So you've got time at what point in the fall do you uh misty step and where do you misty step i think misty step is oh like it's 30, 30 feet. feet so basically feet. so like right on top of them <laughs> like <laughs> like so when yeah. you're <laughs> 30 feet from the floor you have the option of landing anywhere on the floor or on any of these balconies uh what do you want to do what's is there anybody on the floor uh, from what you can tell as you dive in, there's nobody on the floor. There's a guard in each of the um, like an each the balcony. Yeah, one, one guard, one from each country. I'll go to Teresia. So landing? Are you yeah, landing I like in the middle of them? Or are you landing on the ledge in front of the main representative? The middle's fine. Okay. Um, there is a member of their military standing at the back by the door that leads to their... By the way, if anybody do doesn't have sleeping stuff, you can't also just do non-lethal damage and knock them out. But that usually requires a melee weapon. Yeah, so. true. That's okay, I managed to knock someone out. One I knocked out a deer once. The deer is still one of my favorite parts of this whole campaign. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so you still have cool. your... Wait, uh... Punching Misty Step is a bonus bear. action, right? I... Yes. Yes, it is. So. Yes. We've looked this yes. up several times. Yep. It's a bonus. Alright, so what are you doing with your turn? Uh, so you said there was a guard. Yep. I would just shoot one of my poison arrows at him, like, as soon as I fucking land. Alright, roll for attack. Oh. That's a two. That would be a twelve. Yeah. Is that a hit? Yes. Probably not. I'm oh, sorry, what was the total? 12. 12. 12. 12? You hit one of the delegates. Teresia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it's probably a little bit. They're French, right? Mm -hmm. 
That is, yeah. French slash, uh, their culture is based... They, he probably just fucking gave up. Also, <laughs> 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 is a mix of French and Greek. Oh, well, shit. The, Greek, the Greek probably didn't give up. Yeah, no. Nope. Um, the French, though, definitely gave up. Definitely, definitely gave up. He's like, oh, take my Arche Triomphe. Can I offer you a Menage à Trois? <laughs> Oh my god. Cece, didn't you actually like say something in French and it had m m m m yeah, that it was not that long ago. The word that Ryan said, because I can't say it, I'm not going to butcher it. Menage a trois. Oh, menage a trois. Menage a trois? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you said that to me yeah, at one point. I can't remember what for. Kuatoa. You were practicing Oh, I think French it was when we were talking, talking and I found and an I entire found site, site of French. Yeah. French. Um, uh, pick, pick up lines. Pick up lines. Yep. Yes. Voulez-vous que vous ayez votre choix? She did great. It was great. It was fun. I'm learning I'm French. Learning French. So. Here we go. That should do. Spanish um, and Japanese. No, that is not enough. So, second attack? Uh, I'm going to aim at him again. All right. Is, is there really only like four guards in the Five. Are okay. you fucking kidding me? Is that a five? Yes. So. Fifteen? This doesn't end well for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you scared the shit out of this guard as you randomly appeared in the middle at close range, and somehow managed to miss him, which is scared as me more because it makes absolutely no sense to him how he's not dead. Um, <laughs> but that's your turn. You probably would have done better just grabbing a fucking arrow and stabbing it into him. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, add, like, you added your attack bonus properly? <laughs> The, he, he rolled a five. The, yeah. Oh, crap. The bow is plus ten. He rolled, he rolled a two the first time. <laughs> Matt, did you ever uh, uh, odd? Did you ever Don't I get add a bonus attack for something? Sorry, what's that? Did you ever add a large cross? No, wait, I see it. Never yep. Mind. My brain broke. Wait, do I have advantage? Give me a reason why you think surprise you round. Basically. You did take him by surprise, I'll give it to you. <laughs> roll both attacks again. <laughs> that's oh my god! That's, that's it! Change it off like a nice. Oh my god! How bad! How bad! I'm out of four! <laughs> four. <laughs> this roll under a five oh, for all four rolls! <laughs> oh my god! The guard gets over his initial shock. <laughs> <laughs> the gods who gave you that extra little bit of luck are face palming right now. Like we did all everything but go down there and put him to sleep ourselves. <laughs> You're on your own. What's he the champion of? Light. Okay. Yeah. Is he the, the, champion, of, is he the <laughs> champion of luck? <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh. God damn it. Uh, Getty is up there like. You'd think as the champion of light, you'd be able to see. <laughs> um. Oh, it's too bad you didn't give. It's too bad Echo didn't bring up the vision. <laughs> um. All right, that, I guess that brings us to Mira, since Zuko completely did an awesome dive and then botched the rest of his turn. <laughs> like you literally were almost—you were about to hit the ground. You disappeared and reappeared in the middle of them. And <laughs> I think you should have just taken out your damage and just. Um. Right, so I want to sort of do like a dive front flip. At the last second, I want to pull out my wings. All right. And sort of uh, slowly descend down. Slowly descend down. Float yes. down like an angel of death. Pretty much, yes. And you're the okay. angel of death. Right now. <laughs> so you do do the classic angel descent, you know, dropping you feet first, um, I flapping. I am here to save you up now. <laughs> your luminescent wings. Um, mm. All right, are you taking aim at anybody? My guard, because I botched. 
<laughs> Just to try and save Zuko's ass, I will take aim at the same card. Okay. Roll for attack. <laughs> It's a nine plus whatever you. Plus uh, nine. Eighteen. That's not bad. Eighteen. That that's a hit. All right. So he makes a Constitution saving throw. You don't have to worry about damage. Oh. Yeah. My brain forgot, and I went to wait for my D ten. <laughs> Holy shit. Um. He- Passed. He is poisoned. Um, like has the effects of being poisoned, but he is not out yet. He's going to take another. Need another shot of that shit. You Fine. should probably take out your guard. Where you? Where did you land? She hasn't landed yet. She's like floating in the I air. Was, I was oh, floating okay. like a bug. Because she only gets two shots, right? Right. Yeah. So if you want to pick another one, going after the member of the vanguard. All right, roll for attack. Nat 20. Wow. Nice. All right. That means you get another fucking shot, too, because they're a crit. Oh, modes. yeah, that's right. All right, so he is going to have disadvantage on this constitution check because he's already got some in his system. And that's a four. So, yeah, he, um, Vanguard is down, and your the crossbow prepares another shot. You might as well take out mine. Yep. Go for it again. Go ahead. All right, roll for attack. Uh, that's... Twelve. Fifteen. Fifteen. Six plus nine. Oh, okay. Uh, so fifteen. Fifteen total, that's just short of what you need. So you hit him, but doesn't quite pierce the armor enough to get to his skin. This guy's got super fucking good luck. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me. Yeah, the gods are protecting him. Um, (laughs) From a nap, for whatever reason. (laughs) Uh, They don't want him to be up all night, so they're protecting him. What's the um, distance between these platforms? He had coffee made with uh, Red Bull. Um, I like about. Don't give me five that idea. Okay. You do not want me to hype up like that. Didn't get quite the scale I wanted, but. Um... He was also distracted by me playing Skyrim, though, because I had a mod that. I saw you playing added Skyrim. Total douche. Huh? I saw you playing Skyrim. You did? Yeah. Wait, how? On Steam? I was playing something on Steam, too. Oh, okay. Oh. I was about to say, wait, I wasn't streaming. What are you <laughs> no, talking about? No, it just pops up and says, Old Wolf Gaming is playing Skyrim. <laughs> There's Shakira. Um, <laughs> Alright. Like, well, that's not Matt. That's Shakira. <laughs> so that's Mira's uh, turn. Very rarely it's Echo, Matt. it's your like, turn. Shakira's being horny. It's, it's okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> it definitely oh, was. You have no idea. Lip, lip. I... I, I, I... <laughs> I get really excited. I, get really excited. I, I do a little, I, I do a little flip, flip, just jumping, just off, jumping off and, and into, misty, into stuff. misty stuff. Like a cannonball? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Well, Alright, so where are you landing? Uh, um, what's the one what's next, the one to, Zuko? next to Zuko? What's the little, what's the little uh, uh, this one? Cassetta. Cassetta. Yes. Yes. That one. That one. Where did you land, Mira? Oh, I'm still right, like right here. I graciously. Okay, so you're in the middle. Yep. Right. So I, I don't think Echo has any sleeping stuff, does she? Did, did, did yeah. you yeah. ever cross yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. okay. yeah. 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 her? Yeah. Uh, you have a bow. Yeah. Your twenty arrows bow. Are, are poisoned with. You have a bow. Yep. Yep. Bow. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who says bow funny. Bow. 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 Are you going? Are you, are you going to attack anybody? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yes. Um. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. With my bow. With my bow. Bow. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you say it. I'm gonna make fun of you. <laughs> since, I, since I heard it the first time, you're just gonna get made fun of no matter how you say it. Cece, <laughs> don't you dare ask me to say the word. Oh, wait, no. It wasn't you. It was Balencia. It was Balencia. Okay, so, okay, so are, are the people in... Are the, in, are the, are the uh, guards in mine still, still awake? Yeah. Yeah, there's just one guard. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot, shoot that one of the guards in mine. Alright, roll for attack. Okay. Okay. Shit. Oh, if you want to be technical, you are within... Your point playing range, you actually should have had disadvantage. 
Would it have even mattered? <laughs> and the scale's not entirely perfect in here, though. They're... But yeah, te- it's still 10 feet. 23? 23? Wow. 23? Yeah, you hit him. Yeah, All right. Like Constitution that. check. <laughs> Does not pass. All right, Kasena Guard is down. You have a second attack. Do you want to try to take out my guy that seems no, to be extremely he's, fucking he's lucky? He seems to be protected. <laughs> Uh, uh, I want to try and take out Zuko. <laughs> All right, roll for attack. Watch, it's gonna be Malcolm taking with this guy. Probably. Twenty six. Twenty six. I think that does it. We have to do Constitution. Yo, oh, yep. Does not pass. So Ooh. he's out. Good. Wow, fucking time. All right, so Arania, Teresia, and it's just these two. So it's just Kartanak and. Yep. And if that was a surprise round, I think it's back at the top of the order. I think so. Yep. Um, which we <clears throat> will use a D4 to figure out where the... Or, or is there anybody trying to leave the room? It's a good and, question. And, and what... Uh... I thought you already dropped. Yeah, I, think I, I did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think at this point... Um, the panic is starting to set in among the delegates. Some of them... Kind of don't know what the fuck to do. Some well, you do see a couple of people attempt to exit through the outer door, including one of the delegates from Irania and one of the delegates from uh, Teresia, and they end up coming in uh, to different balconies. Um, Tell I me hope, you're smirking. I hope I thought I, how hilarious it would be if one of them went out the door and then fell through the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Which in theory is a possibility, but I'm not going to have you accidentally kill one of the devils. It wouldn't be us, it would be them. It would Suicide. Be dead, they're running. Good to know. Just, go, just throw, your, throw up that magic carpet and just tell it to catch people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Unfortunately. <laughs> for Malcolm. Oh, they're going to see all of them. Roman's going to get the first. Uh, Roman's gonna get the first what? Their guard's going to get the first uh, attack. Attack. Malcolm doesn't care. Malcolm can take this man or woman. 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 Okay, woman. you have your. Uh, what do you have in your hands? While I was dropping, I would have had holstered and drew out my trink. Gotcha. Yes. All right. Question about the Reaper's hand. Yeah. If I holster it, could I just summon it, in, summon it into my hand with with, that, with just the thought I don't actually have to like? Right. Yeah. You don't have to pull it out, but you can do it <laughs> yeah. for. I asked about that because I didn't know if you wanted yeah. it there for decoration, yeah. for flair. Um. I mean, I'm definitely. I mean, I'm no, just so I'm just so used to holding there guns. Definitely for decoration and flair, knowing yeah. Malcolm. Twelve to hit. Um, sorry, uh, to be more descriptive, is the uh, member of the Tetsuya Legion pulls out a um, a katana. Can uh, I have help, that? Help. And goes into a, <laughs> yes. the fighting stance, makes his first attack, so 12's a miss, right? Go, holy shit. 10. Not... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, was that supposed to hit me? It, 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 it kind of like flew by. Do they all have katanas? Do they all have katanas? Legion, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, not all of the guards in the room, just the, the Tetsero Legion. Yeah, steal. Take the katana, damn it. Do it. I want one. Because remember, Rumlin is a mix of Spanish and, and one, Japanese and, culture. And, and, and bring one to me. I, want, um, I, want to get up in I think room. he's in 23 to hit. I would yes, like 23 to does hit me. All right, so he takes a swing at your arm, manages to um, give you a good slice across the forearm, and in the Itch. process, I need you to make a strength saving throw. That's going to be interesting since I don't have my phone with my character sheet on it. <laughs> I think I'm proficient in it and it's a plus two, I want to say. So plus Please seven. Please say he's right. Paper, baby. <laughs> Jake, I do like... have it on paper, but oh, I guess it's like right there. <laughs> he's, he's already looking it up. <laughs> uh, he's already looking it up. I'm not going to pull up my binder. Strength saving throw. Plus seven. Yep. Plus, I have Indomitable I can use if I have you to. Okay? 
Uh, 21. Okay. You managed to keep from dropping the um, the pistol. And that is all of their attacks. Um, that brings us to your turn. I'm gonna shoot him in the neck. Okay. Roll for attack. You got a dart in your neck. <laughs> uh, 21 to hit. Okay. Um, you managed to actually stick the pistol up under <laughs> the line of his helmet, um, right up against his neck and fire. Uh, probably after- hurts him. Probably hurts. That probably, oh, probably hurts a lot. <laughs> um, he staggers and falls... Um, and off of the balcony, <laughs> and, the, and then I'm going to look over and shoot at the other one over here with my next All right. attack. Um, Kartsana, uh guard is, I mean, hardly even a guard. He's carrying a small pole arm, but has no armor of any real kind. Can you uh, take the katana for me. It's it's down here. We're about to go to the floor of the of the Senate. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I want the katana. Take the katana, baby. I will give my powers up once I've defeated the separatists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So you. I don't uh, want to be an emperor. Uh, what's your attack roll? Uh, twenty-three. Okay, they have an AC of twelve. <laughs> well, I rolled on the dice enough to get it, so I didn't have to add my bonus. Constitution saving throw. Oh, I forgot to do one for the. I, well, I guess that would have been him, and that was a fail. Um, and the Karchanak one also a 10, so fail. I have um, one more attack. All the guards are down. Mm-hmm. Unless you're on Zuko. What? No! I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve to be awake after that showing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's everybody, right? Everybody's yeah. down? All yeah, right, so, so I'm going to take my action and jump off and acrobatically kind of roll onto the floor. Alright, chaos is really starting to break out. They're all trying to get out the doors um, now that all the guards are down um, and everybody keeps reappearing in different parts. Um, I'm going to use I'm gonna use thaumaturgy and make my voice several times louder. Everybody calm the fuck down! Yeah. Okay, so you're not letting the king out yet? Well, no, I'm, I'm going to, but I'm going to like yell for them to settle down as I pull the... Okay, out. interesting. Alright. So you yell at everybody to calm down. Yeah. All right. The sudden booming, the voice kind of gets everybody to cl- not calm down, but to shut stop the what they're doing up. and look at what at what's going on. Uh, I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's just all sex. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. No. I wasn't <laughs> so um, they all stop for a moment to look at you. What do you do next? I pull out the crystal. All right. Pull out the bag, and the king comes out. Um, looks kind of surprised to see everything calm in spite of the chaos that looks like has occurred in the room. Yeah, <laughs> took away his moment. <laughs> you were, I was going to, I assumed that while this chaos was going on, you were going to pull him out, and he was going to, you know, for the first time, you're actually going to see him roar. Um, oh. oh, back it up. <laughs> take it back. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Um, Malcolm, shoot first. Ask questions later, Stealer of Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> um, every Champion of death. Little buddy looks very confused when when he appears, but he takes kind of takes stock of the situation, um, and uh, he looks back at you. Well done, Malcolm, and sticks uh, the ba- the crystal back into the bag. It's all right, everyone. I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. Your guards aren't harmed. I simply needed to address the quorum and wasn't properly invited. So if you'll all return to your seats, we have some things to discuss. And that is where we're going to end our session. Um, all right. I'm assuming we're going to end up having to fight the Emperor, so I don't think we're going to escape. Damn. <laughs> so, uh, that is the end of our session. Um, I apologize for the late release of last month's session. Um, had some music rights issues, but hopefully shortly after I recorded this, I have them published. Them for me. Yeah. Um, I got them. Yeah, we no. will be back again <laughs> next gotcha. month, um, or sooner, since everything's gotten scrunched together. Um, 
with the next episode of Windsor Ring. Thank you everyone who watched and have a good night.